All right, thank you. Welcome to the Township Committee meeting March 1st, 2021. This is via Zoom remote access. Uh, roll call, please. Mrs. Martin. Brown. Here. Ms. Fitzpatrick. Here. Ms. Holland. Here. Mr. Olette. Here. Mr. Templeton. And here, also present, Mr. Schwab, our Township Administrator, Mr. Fox, our Township Engineer, Mr. Heinhold, our Solicitor, uh, Mrs. Martin, Deputy Municipal Clerk. I believe Mr. Fenimore is out there somewhere on the, on the phone line. And let's see, who else? I think that's everybody. Um, flag salute. Everybody see that? Yeah. Congratulations to the flag of the United States of America. For which it stands, one nation under God, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. For all. Thank you. All right. The way it won't fall over. And uh, let's see. Sunshine statement, Mrs. Martin. Yes. Please be advised that proper notice of this meeting has been given in compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act in the following manner. Written notice has been mailed to the Burlington County Times and Courier Post and published in the, in the January 5th, 2021 editions. Written notice has been posted on the official bulletin board of the Township of Delanco at least 48 hours prior to the meeting. Remote meeting information has been provided on the website and on the front door of the building. So I will not read all of that. Remote public meeting statement. In order to participate, advanced public comments will be accepted via written letter or electronic mail. All advanced comments must be received no later than six hours prior to the commencement of the published public meeting start time. All advanced public comments must be submitted to the municipal clerk's email at jlor at delancotownship.com or to the municipal clerk's attention at 770 Coopertown Road, Delanco, New Jersey. Uh, public comments submitted before the remote public meeting deadline will be read aloud during the remote public meeting. And uh, I will advise during that section that we did not receive any advanced comments. Okay. Procedures for making comments and muting function during the remote meeting public comments section sessions. Members of the public who wish to make comments or have questions during the meeting, public comment sessions may either make their comments or questions via audio option or by typing in their comment or question via the Zoom platform chat option to all participants, not to a specific participant during the public comment sessions or during any scheduled public hearings. Comments or questions submitted via the chat function during the time when the meeting is officially open to the public will be read. Other comments and questions submitted via the chat function at any time, other, other time during the meeting may or may not be read during the meeting. Members of the public who are deemed to be disruptive as defined by NJAC 5 colon 39-1 at sec may be muted after an initial warning for the duration of the public comment session and or remainder of the remote meeting session. The agenda for this meeting was available on the township website. And that is it. Thank you. Um, I'd like to ask for a moment of silence uh, before we start tonight. Uh, our community lost two. Uh, Two members of our uh, of our family, uh, Pat Finan, passed away suddenly uh, on Sunday. Uh, Pat uh, was a longtime member of the Delanco School Board and uh, contributed in many ways to the community. And uh, our thoughts go to the Finan family during this uh, this time. Um, Doug Robinson, who lived in Delanco with Mar uh, Doug and Marlene, lived on Second Street across the street from the Finans. Um, Doug passed away on Saturday uh, after a battle with cancer. He was living at this um, recently with, at a, with his sister, or excuse me, his daughter up in New Hampshire. Uh, they relocated there a few years ago, but Doug lived in, uh, Doug and Marlene lived in Delanco for many years. Uh, Doug was a uh, reporter with the New York Times, covered the Vietnam War, uh, the civil rights movement, uh, uh, was known by name by uh, 
uh, by Dr. King. Uh, but Doug had some great stories and uh, um, they'll be missed uh, as will Pat. So moment of silence, please. Thank you. All right, ordinance uh, 202102, uh, calendar year 2021 model ordinance to exceed the municipal budget appropriation limits and establish a cap bank NJSA 40A colon 40-45.14. This is a second reading by title only and public hearing. Hearing is now open to the public for ordinance 2021-02. If you have any comments or questions, please uh, speak up, uh, state your name, address, and what your question is regarding this ordinance 02. I have a question. Um, should the amounts be the same? In one place it has one amount and in another place it has another amount. No, the, uh, the first amount is the increase, the 125,000. The second amount is the total with the increase of 175. Oh, okay. The $50,000, instead of 50, we're adding 125 to bring it to okay. 175. I didn't understand that. Yeah, I didn't write this format, the state does, and we have this every year. It's very confusing. Yes, it is. Thank you, Richard. You're welcome. Any other questions on this ordinance? Hearing is now closed to the public. A motion, please, on Ordinance 2021-02. So, uh, second. Was, uh, Mr. Ouellette, who, who got the second there? Chris. Excuse me. Christine. Uh, Chris, all right, Chris Holland. Uh, roll call, please. <clears throat> Mr. Brown. Yes. Ms. Fitzpatrick. Yes. Ms. Holland. Yes. Mr. Olette. Yes. Mr. Templeton. Yes, thank you. Uh, ordinance uh, 2021-03, amending chapters 295 governing vehicles and parking. This is a second reading by title only public hearing. Hearing is now open to the public for ordinance 2021-03. Hi, Mayor John Paillet, 101 W Lane. Good evening, what can we do for you? Could um, explain the amending part of that to me, please. This is regarding Enterprise Drive out off uh, Coopertown Road. And they're, what they're doing, we've had some problems with uh, uh, the various uh, tenants out there and businesses on Enterprise Drive, uh, RLS, Misfits, um, NBR, and they seem to use Enterprise Drive as an, as an auxiliary parking area. So right now we're making it uh, uh, believe no parking uh, on both sides of Enterprise Drive during the public portion, which is about the first uh, 850 feet or so. Beyond that uh, is uh, private property uh, belonging to NBR. So that's, uh, that's what this is about. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Any other questions? Hearing is now closed to the public on Ordinance uh, 03. Motion, please. So moved. Motion by, that was Kate, correct? Yes. All right, I'll thank second. You. Second by Mr. Ouellette. Roll call, please. Mr. Brown. Yes. Ms. Fitzpatrick. Yes. Ms. Holland. Yes. Mr. Ouellette. Yes. Mr. Templeton. Yes, thank you. Uh, Ordinance 2021-04, amending chapter 295-48, governing speed limits. Second reading and by title only in a public hearing. Hearing is now open to the public for Ordinance 2021-04. And this is related, uh, this is on Enterprise Drive once again, and to try to manage uh, the uh, speed limit to a uh, civilized manner on Enterprise Drive uh, to the increased activity in that area. Any questions or comments, public comments by the public at this time on Ordinance 04? Hearing and seeing none, hearing is now closed to the public. Motion please for 04. So moved. Second. Brown, second by Kate Fitzpatrick. 
Roll call, please. Mr. Brown. Yes. Ms. Fitzpatrick. Yes. Ms. Holland. Yes. Mr. Olette. Yes. Mr. Templeton. Yes, thank you. Only took four meetings to get those two ordinances sorted out. All right, uh, ordinance 2021-05, Mending Township Code of Chapter 110-13, Governing Fences and Walls to allow certain non-conforming fences to be maintained and replaced. This is a second reading by title only in a public hearing. I will note that this uh, hearing will be continued to the March 15th meeting um, as the Joint Land Use Board will be uh, uh, discussing this at their regular scheduled meeting tomorrow night. So we'll actually have two uh, public hearings on this. Uh, hearing is now open to the public for Ordinance 05. Any questions yes. or comments Mayor, at this time? Mayor John Mayor John Paye, 101 W Lane. Yes. I'm wondering, is there some kind of a stipulation in the ordinance that would allow for properties that are unusually, uh, I don't know how to phrase it, that not all properties in Delanco are the same. Um, some properties I think would allow the fence to come to the front corner line um, as an exception, I, I wonder if there's something in that ordinance that would allow for some variation of that. What, what are you describing as the front corner line? The property, uh, the, the front and dirt, the or the house, or the structure? Uh, I'm sorry, the structure, front corner of the structure, where typically it now is the rear corner of the structure. So the, this ordinance is actually very narrowly drawn to address pre-existing non-conforming fences um, and to allow those to be replaced or repaired in kind as opposed to um, strict compliance back with the rear property, uh, rear dwelling line uh, as, as is the standard in the ordinance. So it's a pretty narrow situation for an existing non-conformance. Okay, thank you, understood. Thank you. Uh, Mayor, go uh, ahead. Uh, shouldn't we wait until the land use board comes back to us? We what are. If, what if they pick this apart? You know, we're, we're putting this ordinance out here now. That's why I said we're gonna have uh, the the planning board's gonna look at this tomorrow and uh, they have a uh, somewhat light agenda so they'll be able to have some time on this. Um, but this will come up again, uh, this public hearing. The there's, if there's meeting, any modifications. Fact, continue to the second meeting of the month. If there's any modifications, will we just amend it to that and improve it so, at second reading, Doug? So John, if it's uh, substantive changes, We'll have to advertise those substantive changes and then have a later public hearing. If they're not substantive changes and they're just clarifications, uh, then we can proceed with a second public hearing that night. All right, well, you're here tonight, Doug, so I'm sure this is uh, the way it's gonna go. <laughs> yeah, and this way, if we, we get any public comment, we can always consider that issue as well. So it's a, it, you know, I wouldn't want somebody to appear tonight thinking they could comment and then not be able to, so. Okay. What I want to ask you about, Doug, in that paragraph K, that's that last sentence, yep. uh, shall apply to the section of the fence running parallel to the side of the house to the side property line. So in the fence running along the side property line, that seems to describe the same thing. Janice, so Janice sent me, I was trying to describe from the point on the side of the house to the side property line and then up the side property line. But Janice sent me an email saying, if we just take out parallel, yeah, then, and I, I said that, I think that's clear, that that's good. So sorry for my superfluous parallel. <laughs> I have enough trouble spelling it, so that's <laughs> all right. So the parallels are going to get deleted in the final version, right? If not, if all else remains the same, right? All right. Any other questions on that language or this ordinance 05? As I said, it's going to be continued to the March fifteenth meeting. 
And, and with the land use board taking it up tomorrow, we can still elect to not revise it in the face of whatever critique or suggestions that they might have? Is that so their, their view is to um, determine master plan consistency. If they actually find that this is something that rises to the level where it's inconsistent with the master plan, then I'll talk to you about a special procedure that we'd have to consider whether we want to go through, which is where the governing body can still proceed with it as long as we adopt a supplemental resolution setting forth the reasons why at the time we adopt it. But if they don't, if they find it consistent with the master plan and just give us recommendations or thoughts to, to what they would like to see added or revised, then we don't have to do that special process. And then it's just a matter of what we talked about a minute ago, whether it's substantive changes or non-substantive. Thank you. Thank you. If no other comments, uh, hearing is now closed to the public. A motion, please, to continue the public hearing and reading by title only uh, to the March 15th meeting. Motion. Move. Second. Second to Fernalet. Roll call, please. Mr. Brown. Yes. Ms. Fitzpatrick. Yes. Ms. Holland. Yes. Mr. Olette. Yes. Mr. Templeton. Yes. Thank you. Thanks for everyone's patience on the, on the fence ordeal, but important. Uh, public comment statement. Purpose of the public comment session is to allow uh, residents to share information and or views with the Delanco Tal Township Committee. Since the committee may be hearing the information for the first time, it is not always possible to have issues and questions settled within the public comment session. Um, Mrs. Martin, any, any advance comments or questions that you've no, there were no advanced comments or questions. And uh, Mayor, I see nothing in the chat box at this time. Okay. All right, meeting is now open to the public for comments and questions, session one. I have a question. Uh, this is Elizabeth Madiset, 737 Franklin Street. Um, I'm here on behalf of the Environmental Advisory Board. Uh, Amber Perlmutter was uh, going to up here tonight, but um, she had a, a death in her family. So her uh, grandma passed away suddenly. Mm -hmm. um, so she had asked me to come and just um, bring uh, the committee's attention to the EAB's proposed Hawk Island cleanup scheduled for Saturday, May 8th. And just wanted to get your approval for that date and um, we have been talking to the mayor and uh, John Fenimore in trying to schedule those dates, that date. So if that's a good date, then we can plan for that. Any questions, problems? Uh, Liz, that at recreation too, and uh, at the recreation meeting, Amber was there and um, we thought it was a good date. Okay, great. So then we will move forward to uh, make plans for that and get it going. Hopefully um, the weather will be nice that day. Yes. Um, what, what are you gonna focus on? Uh, John, John's trying to speak, it's there. Liz, yeah. can you hear me? Yes, this go John? Ahead. Did you reach out? Did you reach out to the chief to let the chief know? Uh, no, but we will. Okay. Um, that's, that's number one, to make sure that he's, um, you know, up to speed on it. That's all. Okay. And then and I guess you'll probably need um, maybe one or two public works guys to pick the bags up and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, you scout that, John, like a week or two prior and just, you know, that the road's passable for your... Yes. Yep. Absolutely. And uh, Liz, uh, and that's it. Center, what areas uh, you were going to focus on? Uh, not really sure at this point. I mean, whatever we can get access to, um, 
you know, generally it's good to go at low tide and work on the, uh, you know, the banks because that's where all the junk collects. So, yeah, the, uh, the the west tip of uh, the, the the lot one, the township acquired, uh, is usually right. the first. And now that we own it, we don't need to get a permission slip. What? Right. So we, you know, we'll work all that out with um, you know you all to make sure you know what we're accessing is what we actually have access to, and what we can have people come on and and get to with no problem. Okay, you were saying something. Yeah. Yeah, I want to say, uh, Liz, when we did that cleanup with QB, mm -hmm. um, we did along the trails as well. We didn't just do um, the beach area and the tip so okay. that some people, you know, as you walk along the trails, some people could just pick up whatever debris was right along the trails because you'll find stuff right along the trail. So okay. we should include that as well because there's like two or three trails there's probably more than must be about five or six now but so that people can go in different directions and do it that way not just the waterfront okay we'll keep that in mind definitely thank you yeah the, the water the waterfront is going to be your hardest to get to right um, right um so remember that um there's a couple areas that's just a little tricky to get down to but i mean you can get down to it but uh generally the the roads are um where people walk now just remember from that gate to the tip is a mile out so remember that okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a long way that's not long <laughs> no well just pick up trash and and walk there and you'll see how it is okay um Okay, well, you know, we're going to work out all the details with, you know, whoever we need to work out the details with. And um, we just wanted to get the date nailed down so uh, we can proceed. Now, I'll get the bags. I'll get the bags and the gloves and, and the, and the uh, grabbers. Okay. So you don't have to worry about none of that stuff. Okay. And then uh, I guess you'll have a couple guys out there with... Uh, yes. Dump four truck. wheel or whatever and yep okay yeah. um if we're done with this i have another couple issues uh of my own that i'd like to throw out there um the first one is and i had communicated with um the mayor and uh john fenimore and also the um mr mersinger on the school board about there's a problem with people not picking up after their dogs in the Poplar Union um, Franklin Street area, the especially the um, area along Union between the track behind Walnut Street School and the sidewalk is pretty disgusting. Um, I did see that Mr. Mersinger said, you know, they would do what they can. We talked about putting the uh, school board, putting some garbage cans there and maybe uh, pick up after your dog signs. But, you know, that's not a high priority for them at this moment, but they have um, committed to, uh, you know, look at that as time and resources allow. Um, I picked up seven piles on my um, strip along the sidewalk before the snow uh, fell and I put a sign up homemade sign up it seems to have worked mostly um, so I was just uh, would like to request the town to perhaps put out a notice via the email um, system just reminding people that they need to pick up after their dogs um, you know basically that's it maybe ask the police to kind of keep an eye out more vigilantly to you know see if people are not doing what they should be doing so that's all i just wanted to bring it to the committee's attention um you know a lot of kids play on that uh field back there even though the school's not in session i guess right school's not in session is it still virtual no, um moving to a hybrid um, yeah shortly. so 
you know, it's really, it was bad and they did clean it up, but I did see, oh, hello there, Mr. Mersinger. <laughs> hello, we are, we, are, we are in session, absolutely. It's just, we have students that are virtual, we have students that are hybrid. Uh -huh. uh, so, but well, yeah. I meant physical session, yeah. Yes, yes, so I mean, and we do have in-person, but just, just to let everyone know that we are, uh, as Mrs. Madison said, that we are gonna work with the township on this. John Fenimore reached out, so. You know, we don't want to ignore it. It's just a matter of, you know, where is it on our list right now? That's all. Right. Yeah. No, um, I totally understand, but um, I just wanted to bring it to the attention of the entire committee, you know, since I've been talking to the mayor. Could I make a mayor. comment on this issue, Vera Dharma, 605 Hickory Street? Uh, hang on, hang on, uh, Vera. Uh, Liz, are you, anything else or you've got the I floor. have another unrelated topic. So... If Can I make a comment on the topic about the dog poop? Go ahead, Vera. Um, I'm right on the corner there, and um, there there is a neighbor who has um, two dogs, and he, he needs a walker. He's physically disabled. So we've seen him take tumbles, you know, fall flat on the sidewalk. He cannot physically pick up that poop, and we had discussions about this, and I'm just telling you that just putting a sign up for, for this guy, he can't, can't do it. The only thing is maybe um, if his son somehow was involved with it, but those are his, I think those are his like therapy dogs. So I just wanted to let you know, those are two dogs every day there and they're never, like if I see it, sometimes I pick it up, you know, because, what, because the neighbors really don't want to, um, give the guy trouble because he is so, I mean, he has a hard life and, but it is a big mess. So, because I had, I made that decision every once in a while, I'll pick up some of his stuff from his dog. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you. If, if I might interject, I did hear about this gentleman today or somebody who, who knows the situation. Uh, is there a yard at his property? Uh, I can't quite place the house. Yes, there He's is. He's a renter, he's a tenant, and there is a, there is a yard there, so I don't know whether the um, landlord would do anything with that or not. The landlord has his own dogs, too. Does the landlord, Does the landlord live there? I believe so. Yeah. Um, yeah, I have seen the gentleman with the two dogs and the walker, and I kind of concluded that that might be part of the problem, but... I don't think he's been able to make it down to my house um, right. with seven loads that I picked up. And actually there was some on the sidewalk during the snow. So it's not just him. I mean, no. I mean he, he made that area might be what he's doing, but there's other people too. And judging by, you know, the poopology, I think it's different dogs. <laughs> I think it's um, all over town, Liz. It's not just in your area because we have it here. Christine uh, experienced it on the riverbank. Um, people aren't abiding by the law. I had John Fenimore put a sign up on Rancocas and Orchard a couple years ago, and they actually let their dog go right under the sign. So uh, some people just ignore it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, this is... You know, it's a mess. I don't want to take up too much time, but the, as long as I've lived here, which is about 30 years, this is really the first time that I would say this is a problem. So, well, well, you know, I'm, very, I'm very surprised. There's, there's cameras everywhere. Everybody has ring doorbells and security cameras. And, uh, you know, I would really be surprised if I put the word out that you're being, you know, there, you're on camera everywhere. Yeah. Well, I, I plan on putting something on the resident's Facebook page and just remind people that it's against the law. It flows into the river, which is our drinking water source. So that well, might get... It's, it's a general discourtesy to the whole community. And, right. uh, yeah. you know, if the administration, uh, if uh, the, the staff, they've got something that uh, as far as an email blast they can put out, uh, depending on the situation, approaching the individual or... Uh, asking them about that or just give them the, the, the good stare, you know, as they walk away. Um, that doesn't work so well at uh, 11 o'clock at night when he was ever the dog walker, you know, I'm not out there with a flashlight, you know, but uh, it, it takes a community and it takes, uh, you know, just a courtesy uh, 
for your neighbors. If you've got a pet, there's a responsibility that goes along with that. Um, and cleaning up after it and keeping it from barking at all hours of the day, uh, that's part of the responsibility of having a pet like that. So, um, just to even get the word out, if you can put something on the, the social media, uh, the township will put out uh, something through our, our uh, media avenues and we'll, we'll get on top of this. So, okay, great. Thank you. thank you. You had another point, Liz? Yes, I do. Um, so spotted lantern flies. I have been, I walk, I go for a lot of walks and I've been um, checking trees. And Hold that thought. John Fenimore. <laughs> yes. Go for it. Spotted <laughs> lantern flies. Uh, it's funny you're talking about that. I, um, there was three girls that stopped here at the garage today and um they wanted to go behind my garage and look for you know the lantern flies and i said well we only own to the berm and the rest of that stylex so they, well they reached out to stylex already and what apparently they're going around uh the department of uh, agriculture they're going around and and going to trucking places where they where they have evidence of these on the trees and what they feel is that they're hitching a ride on some of these vehicles because underneath of the trucks makes a, a good barrier for them well with that i talked to them i said well i have uh, you know our trail up at the compost area is loaded with them so i took all three of them up there and uh they were very helpful they um they they showed me what to look for um uh, and they're going to come back out and spray uh they're go they're going to let us know days before they come out they'll post them and they'll do these uh these uh trees these special trees that they like and, oh, they and also what what also what they're seeing now is a little scary is that the bees the hornets and the wasp like the sugary stuff that they, um, you know, put out on the tree. And now with just them and then having the bees going after her, there could be a big problem with the bees now, you know, around these trees. So um, <clears throat> they're gonna come back out. Um, I, I showed them that. And I also told them about 200 rand coccus because we have a lot of those trees down right at the fence line and around the building. So uh, they're going to put that on their oh. agenda. Uh -huh. And they're from uh, New Jersey Agriculture, correct? Yes. Yep. Interesting. Does that answer your question, Liz? Not really, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I've been noticing that there's egg masses on a lot of the trees. And right now is a great time to try to destroy those egg masses so they don't turn into um, more bugs, um, because I don't know if anyone ever tried to squash the, um, the adults are hard to squash because they jump and the nymphs move so fast you can't even see. So um, I was just wondering if the town has any kind of plans to try to remove some of these egg masses from trees that so before they um, can hatch or to encourage um, property owners to look for the egg masses. I did email Mr. Mersinger earlier today. I don't know if he's been able to see it, but um, some of the trees in front of Pearson School have the egg masses on them. Um, the Burlington County Park System has uh, gotten a volunteer program together where you can volunteer to go out and scrape masses. Um, there's a lot in Pennington Park on some of the trees. I'm a volunteer and I plan on going out on Wednesday to see what I can scrape. Um, so I think it would, it might be a, a good thing to uh, put out another email blast or something to alert residents because about the masses that might be on their trees. I know some of the trees in front of the big mansions on the riverfront have quite a few. If, if you've got, um, 
I think there's something on our website. I haven't looked in that corner recently, but if you can get like a, a one page pamphlet that has a photo that identifies mm -hmm. it, you yeah, can yeah. put that as an email blast that everybody can see so they can see it and uh, just disperse that information and the photograph and what to do and why this is a problem. So yeah, if you can find something like that and send that to Beverly or Janice or myself, okay. and we'll pump that out. Okay, because I know the county actually did a little video on what to scrape yeah. on. And, um, and then another thing is in the spring when these things hatch, because we're not going to get them all, to maybe um, try to put traps on some of, you know, the trees or have put out instructions so that homeowners can make traps if they want to or, you know, get scouts involved or, or something to try to Okay. catch as many of these bugs as possible. So I just wanted to. Thank you. You're welcome. Appreciate all the good and information. <laughs> and I, I think I'm done. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Your 15, your 10 minutes of fame. Any other uh, questions, comments during the public session here? Hello, Mayor. Uh, this is Marilyn Entman, 101 yeah. Bellevue. Good evening, hello. Um, I'm camouflaged as John Paye. I wasn't going to say anything. <laughs> okay. uh, a couple of things. Having um, raised athletic children and um, participating with athletic grandchildren, I found that most schools do not allow dogs on their property. There is a general rule, no dogs. So that takes care of any droppings that a dog might leave on a school property where kids are playing sports or kids are playing. And my recommendation is we consider that. And the other thing is um, with speaking with people, I find most people have not acquired a dog license that have dogs. And maybe we should uh, do something to try to get more people to get their pets, their dogs, and their cat license, and give them information pertaining to what responsibilities they have as a pet owner. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Yes, Mayor John Paye, 101 W Lane. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just making an observation. I'm sure the committee already knows about it, but Marilyn and I walk on 2nd Street a lot. To 2nd Street or 2nd Avenue? Street. Street. And I notice there's a number of intersections that have uh, no stop signs. So I don't know if, if, if that's okay, or but I'll just bring it to, you probably already know about it, but I just thought I mentioned it because I just, kind of realized it one day last week when I was walking. All right, thank you. Thank you. I know that the police had conducted an inventory of uh, stop signs and we're matching that up with the, uh, our municipal code that the, the signs were placed where they were backed up by the code and, and so forth. So uh, that's something we sh should follow up on. So thank you, thanks for pointing that out. We, we have been adding them uh, along 2nd Street and John Fenimore, if you're still there. Um, yep. But I always preach, you're foolish if you don't stop at these side streets back here, anywhere, 2nd, 3rd. I don't care who's got stop sign or not, but you better stop. Of course, you know, I do. I don't, it's a very dangerous situation. And uh, one of my cars got hit once on one of those side streets. So go easy. Even in Riverside, don't ever blow through those side streets. That's all. Any other questions or comments from the public? All right, hearing and uh, seeing none. Uh, sorry. This is now closed to the public. you hear me? Who is it? Oh. Hi, this is Catherine Tarsich Keeley, Board yes. of Ed um, member, liaison. Yes. Um, I just was wondering what additional information you might need um, from us about our financials, because I know when the last we spoke about a possible loan or um, some portion of the funds going towards the school this year. Um, there was some more additional information needed. I just wanted to see if, if you had received that or if there was other information we could provide. Um, I reached out to Mr. Mersinger regarding some programs and uh, amounts and what have you. And 
Uh, he advised me that he wasn't in a position to release that information to me yet until your budget is um, actually public information. So I did reach out for additional information, but have not received it, um, Kath Catherine. Okay, so he has the specific numbers you were looking for. I mean, like right. the list of what, what you would want to, to get from us. You, you were asking about cuts though, Kate. That, that's not something we discuss right now in a preliminary way. Um, well, I was asking about the costs of programs and activities. Not necessarily cuts, maybe. You specifically I, asked programs that would be cut. Yeah, well, that's what I was thinking, that we would, you know, that it would be my desire to help with some of those programs and activities. And right now you're not in a position to give me that information because you don't know what would be cut at this point. Is that correct? Um, I would say that we certainly can't talk about cuts at this point when our committee is still in the planning stages. Uh, it's definitely not something to share. Uh, right. Because, you know, I mean, hypothetically, any kind of cut that we would put out there as, as public knowledge, uh, we want that to be something that our board has gone through and finalized, that that's not just an idea, that that's the plan. So that's, you know, it's, that's why it's very difficult to share anything like that right now. Okay. Can you share any information regarding the cost of some of the other programs and activities? Well, as, as I said in my response to you, um, my, my philosophy on this is it costs a tremendous amount of money to educate students in an effective way. Uh, when it comes to that, it's not just about specific programs uh, and missing out on certain programs. I mean, it's, it's about the core of what we do to educate kids. And, uh, you know, that, that in, that's programs, that's staffing, that's all sorts of different things that are incorporated in our budget. So the programs you were asking about, um, you know, I, I can't necessarily say, well, let's talk about these, you know, five to 10 programs or whatever. It's, that, that to me is too specific at this time. But in general, uh, you know, our budget uh, does have a shortfall. Uh, we are coming up with plans to address that shortfall. The good news is that we are receiving additional funding from the state uh, I know. when it comes to the, the emergency, sorry, the emergency release fund, um, relief funding, and then also the state uh, equalization aid. So that helps, but then we still have a shortfall. So we have to plan for that shortfall, but I, I can't necessarily say, well, here are the things that we're planning on cutting or anything. I, I can't discuss that at this stage. Right. Um, are you presenting your budget on the 17th? That's the budget introduction. So that's not necessarily the presentation of the actual budget. That's a, that's a presentation of the, the budget, but that's not necessarily the finalized budget. Okay. Uh, but, well, without getting too specific, maybe I can just help frame the issue a little bit. Uh, this is- Can, can you- Yes. Uh, Steve McLaughlin. So we don't have a free for all here? Of course, yes. Uh, Steve McLaughlin here, 740 Grand Cocos Avenue. Thanks. Um, on, the, on the Board of Education, but speaking as a private citizen. Um, uh, so anyway, I think part of, our, part of the, I mean, the plan here is I think that the, my, my concern is that um, we have a short-term crisis with, the, with this budget shortfall. And I want to try to just mitigate the long-term harm that that does. Um, because we may, it looks like we may end up with some more tax revenue in the future, you know, two, three years down the road as tax money comes in from new developments. And also I'm new to the board and I'm very interested in, in improving the efficiency of the schools and getting more out of, uh, out of what we have and, and cutting costs where we can, but that again takes, takes time. So for me, the worst case would be, let's say we end up losing a teacher or a couple of teachers while we have this short term crisis and then, um, that would that would hurt the students and the whole town. So, that that's my perspective. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Yeah, not everyone's on the video here, and there's a lot of call-ins, and so when people just kind of jump in and start talking, no one knows who's saying or where they're coming from. So. I was going to identify myself. I, yeah. No. Thank you. Any so, other uh, questions Mr. or comments? Mayor, jo Mr. Mayor, Joe Mersinger, thirteen oh one Burlington Avenue, which you know I, I kind of live here. Um, 
I just, you know, just to- I think you're muted there. And, and Catherine, what, what was that? But, so um, just to speak to what Kate and Catherine were discussing, I mean, Kate, it's my understanding- I think you're muted there, Mr. Mersinger. No, I can, I can hear him. I can hear him. Or maybe, I'm missed, maybe I lost the audio, sorry. All right. Well, anyway, it's, uh, sorry, I, I, I didn't know if I'm cutting out or something. No, you're fine. So it's been my understanding that the township committee discussed pilot funds and there are some township committee members that are considering uh, giving some of those funds to the district, something to that effect, you know, and I, you know, on one hand, uh, you know, I will say that if we received additional funding, that would certainly help our budget. Uh, on the other hand, you know, I do understand that that's your, those are your funds, you know, that's not something for the district to decide, that's for the township committee to decide. Um, but, but what I will say, though, is that our budget shortfall that we're addressing, it is going to have an impact. So, Kate, I can't give specifics now, but it's going to have an impact on certain things that we do. And uh, so, you know, if, if the if were to give additional funds from the pilots that I know that's been discussed, that would help. It would help tremendously. Does it solve the entire issue? No, because the recurring costs that we've been seeing over the past couple of years don't just disappear next year. We still have those costs. So in the short term, our, our budget would be helped tremendously. But in the long term, you know, we still need to figure out other solutions for addressing the shortfall that's going to continue to happen because of recurring costs. And, and you know, we, we've talked about it with the township committee that these recurring costs typically are related to out of district tuition, transportation, services, you know, and this is, it, that is just a, a factual matter that those costs uh, are coming from that source. So, you know, what, what is our plan for what we're going to cut and all that? Well, we're certainly, we don't want to cut services to students at all. We don't want to cut programs at all uh, or staff, you know, as, as Stephen was mentioned. I mean, we, we want to avoid the worst possible uh, case scenarios, but at the same time, you know, when, when we have a, a, a very large shortfall, you know, we are, we are put in a position of making very difficult choices that, you know, we, it, it was not due to any kind of uh, mistakes or mismanagement on our part. You know, we, it, when we receive students that require a lot of services and, it, and it's expensive to educate them, then that, you know, that's not our choice. That's something that we're required to do. And that's part of our mission to educate children. So it's, but still at the same time that there is a cost associated with that. So, and that's not just related to pilots uh, or, you know, any particular neighborhood or any particular development. It's related to the whole community that when education uh, has comes at a significant cost, uh, it, it does impact the whole community. It's not just the school district. It impacts everyone. Sure. It's just something that, that I wanted to say that, you know, the township committee Although it is your decision, you know, you have the opportunity here to make a big impact and help us this year with that based on the pilot funds, based on the, the, the factors that are impacting us. But again, I mean, I, I know that it's a, a debatable topic among the committee. It's just something that I, I appreciate that you're considering. Thank you, Joe. Um, I I also believe that our town is seriously underfunded by the state and federal government, and I'm looking into that. Um, and I already did receive an answer from Senator um, Singleton. So whatever avenue I can take to see that we get more funding, I'm reaching out. I just want you to know that. I'm not a school board member, but I am a resident of this community and I have a responsibility to see that we do the best we can for our children as also a resident of the township committee for our town. So these kids are our future and I, uh, you know, I'm passionate about it. So I'm doing whatever I can on my end to see if we can't get more funding that's needed for this community. So I am doing that. I just want you to know that I'm aware of the situation. Great, I appreciate those comments and a little bit of background on the, on the school situation. And uh, I think a, a big part of that with that the parents and, and whether you've got uh, residents, whether you've got uh, children in the system or not, 
uh, need to uh, take part in this in this you know to, uh, in the in the school board meetings, uh, whether it, we continue on this uh, remote platform or in person, because it affects everybody and. Uh, uh, the questions uh, the public needs to uh, uh, be a little more active in, in taking a little more active role in how uh, things are, are, are tax dollars are being spent, both on the municipal side and on the school district side, um, but uh, uh, and ask the hard questions. Um, there is, you know, as, as many of us uh, learned at various levels, uh, there is a significant funding problem, a deficiency with uh, education costs. Uh, it's, it strikes small school districts particularly hard. Um, and the way New Jersey districts are structured, that uh, it's basically every man for himself. Uh, school districts do not, uh, small districts don't have the depth to support uh, the various needs and various uh, curriculums that are required to serve all the students in their population. Uh, larger districts have a lot more depth to, to handle that. And so uh, having, as we have along the, you know, the river, uh, the 130 corridor, many, a lot of small districts, um, that uh, this, is, this is a common problem. Um, and either we join up and band together uh, the school districts uh, and, and, uh, and solve it together and uh, combine their resources, uh, or we're going to have uh, more, more years like this. Um, so anyway, it's, uh, we're all learning a lot, and uh, we'll see how the next uh, couple weeks uh, progress. So appreciate all the input uh, by everybody participating tonight. Thank you. Any other comments? M Mayor, may I speak? Stephen Moore, 2800 Colgate Avenue. Good evening. Um, Go ahead. Good evening. Hello, Mayor. Um, I just want to state one thing. Um, as a as a former board member, I, I won't go into the, the topic of whether you know the Lancaster Township Committee should make a contribution to the school district or not. That that's for the Township Committee and the school board officials to discuss. I just want to make one comment. What whatever is the Township Committee does if it decides to help out the school board, that is a short-term fix. The, it, is very, it is very important that at the end of this, we have a unified front among our local elected officials when it comes to the state. I, I think that, because right now, we're, 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 the discussion from what I'm hearing based on meetings is it, it's the same taxpayers, it's the same residents. But as Mr. Mersinger said earlier, this, this problem isn't going away. There are issues up at the state that need to be addressed that affect our town. And I think that the residents and our citizenry would be, be, would be well served if the school board and the township committee formed a unified front. And as Kate said, you know, go and advocate for more additional resources for our district and our town. Um, I, I applaud, uh, you know, individual members of the board and the committee doing that on their own. However, it will not be as effective as if you, unif if you do it together as a unified front. So whether, whatever it is th the decision is, is, as far as the township committee to make a contribution to the school board budget, it is a short-term fix um, and it doesn't address the long-term problems that faces the district. That's all I wanted to say, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. All right. I'd like to close this session, uh, this public comment session at this time. Comments and reports. Uh, Township Administrator, Mr. Schwab. Thank you. Um, three things. <clears throat> One, we mentioned the stormwater ordinance. Uh, the state has given us a uh, model, the stormwater ordinance. Um, uh, the mayor has gone through it. I think our, our uh, solicitors looked at it and our engineers looked at it. And apparently it's not something where we have choices. So that there seems to be a, a state form that uh, every municipality is being asked to adopt. And uh, unless uh, one of them has comments otherwise, I would recommend that 
we put it in format and introduce it for first reading intermediate on the 15th. And then you'll have your public hearing at your first meeting in April, and we'll be able to get that adopted. We need to have these new rules in place before there's another a major applicant for development. Uh, and so that's the, the time frame issue. None of us know enough about it to know whether or not uh, it makes sense or so on, but it appears to, it's an ordinance to adopt to match all the state regulations. I haven't been able to figure out why we just don't do an ordinance say we adopt state regulations, but that's not how it works. So um, Mike, Harry, Doug, unless you have any comments, that's what I would recommend we do to move forward on this. Yeah, I agree, Richard. That, that, that would be fine. Yep. Okay. Uh, have we been given that uh, update yet, Richard? No, I, now, now that we've talked about that, I can send you all 46 pages of it. Yeah. So we will, we will forward you I'll, it as I'll an attachment. i outline version. <laughs> I can, we can look at it from that perspective, but uh, hopefully one of the things that uh, Janice and Kitty will do is they have to do a summary uh, legal notice so we don't pay uh, thousands of dollars for the legal advertisement to do that by summary. But every municipality in the state is doing this, so we'll just have to copy them. Okay, and that ordinance does include that checklist, Terry, that we need to include? Yes, we will make sure it's in there. Okay, thank you. The model ordinance doesn't have a checklist. Um, I think that's, that's an annex to it. Correct. Yeah, we need to make sure that's included so it's part of the uh, land use board application. Yeah. Okay. The other thing is the event lawn. Um, as you're probably aware, uh, we, we received a county open space grant uh, and what we applied for and we received 130000 to take that area uh, outside of the softball field, outfield, and take the existing grades and turn that into from weeds to grass. We did one step, which was eliminate the weeds, and uh, we put together specs through Taylor's office and are out to bids for doing the next phase. I just wanted to brief you on it. We had a, a pre-bid meeting. There were four very interested vendors and I think there'll be more. The bids are going to be received on the 9th and to be reviewed and ready for your meeting on the 15th. That's why I'm bringing it to your attention. So your meeting on the 15th will be, you'll be getting an email prior to that with the information. Hopefully it'll be within the uh, budget and everything will be okay so that you can authorize uh, the bids to be awarded the 15th. The time frame is important because it has to be, uh, the, 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 this turf has to be uh, properly composted and fertilized and so on, ready for seeding no later than May 15th. The contract itself is a 21 day contract once it's signed, but by the time we award it and we get all the bonds and so on, it's gonna be in April. So we're going to be hopefully by the end of April, but uh, in terms of the ground, we want it done by, by May. So we're going to move on that fairly quickly. Uh, so I just want to let you know that the, the spec itself is on our, our website. So if there's any questions, let me know. And then you receive the assessor's uh, report for the month of January. That's the other thing that I have to mention. And, uh, you know, we'll be sending more budget information as I get it based on the last budget meeting and your next meeting is the 22nd at 3.30. Any questions for me? Uh, Richard, well, I could ask Harry during his report. Never mind. Okay. All right. All right, that's it. I'm done. You can Very move good. on to Doug or Harry. Uh, Mr. Fox, you're up. Question, Harry. Just, just kidding. Sure. Yeah. Sorry. You have a question, John? No, I want you to do, you'll probably answer it in my report. Okay, okay. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, our uh, 2020 road program, uh, the weather is now starting to break, uh, hopefully. Um, I'm waiting to hear from the contractor when they're going to start back up on that. As soon as I do, I will send out an email to everyone giving you the schedule. Um, they will also have to notify the residents on the streets um, at least 24 hours before they start their work. Um, start to work back up again. Is that uh, lilac, Harry? Pardon me, John? Is that lilac? Uh, yes, that's lilac and uh, Walter. 
and yeah. spruce. And spruce. Laurel and hickory, yeah, to hickory, yeah. Do you have a, uh, uh, a one page uh, sheet with the streets and the target dates for uh, construction that we can get that to, you know, put that up? Um, on unfortunately, it was last minute. Harry emailed his report just before the meeting. Yeah. And all that is listed on that report. All right. We well, can reformat that and, and put that out so people know what's coming this summer, this spring and summer. Go ahead. I'm sorry to interrupt, Harry. No problem. Thank you. Um, the 2021 road program, um, we are setting up a meeting, um, and Richard indicated he was available on Thursday. Um, and, and John, why have you on here? Um, are you available on Thursday to meet to review those plans? Yes. Great. Okay, then we'll, we'll set that up. We'll, we'll meet with um, Richard and John to review the uh, preliminary plans uh, for that road program. Um, once they're okay with it, um, we'll finalize the plans and we have to submit those to NJDOT for their approval and then we we'll go out to bid. Um, we also were going to send a copy of the plans to the Shade Tree Commission um, so they can look at the trees and, and see if there's any uh, issues and how they want us to handle the, the shade trees. Um, the uh, Hickory Street and, Ch and Chestnut Street uh, drainage project, um, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that Mr. Mersinger's on, on here. Um, that is starting up tomorrow. Uh, that's the drainage improvements on Hickory over by the, uh, the pump station. And then there's uh, Chestnut over by the school, uh, we're replacing some pipes. We're going to be starting over on Hickory Street first and then moving over to Chestnut. So we'll let you know um, exactly when they'll be out there. Uh, it, it won't, it won't, we're not shutting down any roads. Um, the, all the work is on the shoulders, basically next to the curb. There'll be a short, we have a couple of crossings, so, so we will close off the roads for a short time, uh, approximately an, an hour or two uh, at a time. Um, but the whole project shouldn't take any more than two weeks, weather permitting. Well, um, we, I, I just want to, on behalf of the district, want to say thank you. And so, Harry, do you, do you have Tim Allen's information to contact him as the director of facilities? I, I don't actually. All right. Well, I can do is I have your email address. I can forward you some information just so you know when, when you have your info, you can share with him and we'll, we'll, we'll get it from you. We appreciate that. Okay, you're welcome, no problem. Um, the, uh, the Zubrog seawall. Um, I, we do have a meeting set up with um, DEP, uh, with the Assistant Commissioner, uh, Vince Mazzi, uh, and his staff. Uh, that's on the, the 9th. Um, after that meeting, we'll have a pretty clear idea on, on how to proceed. Um, uh, so after that meeting, I will report back uh, and, and let you know what his staff has come up with. And as I mentioned before, he has indicated um, in, in emails and verbally that we can install a, a structure, whether it's a seawall, day beyond, or some type of structure back at the original property line um, of Zubo. So that's what we're, we're pushing for, and, and I will fill you in after that meeting. Um, the, the uh, town hall uh, COVID improvements. Uh, the, the contractor has done as much work as he can do on that. The uh, window has been ordered. It's being manufactured uh, now. It's a pass bulletproof pass through window. Uh, so as soon as that is, is is in from the manufacturer, the contractor will install that, and we can just final that that project out. And and that's all I have this time. Thank you. Thanks. A lot going on there. Thank you. Uh, let's see, Mr. Heinold. Yeah, I, Mayor, I think everything I have is on the agenda for regular session or executive. So unless anybody has any questions for me beyond that, I'll just wait until those items come up. Do you want to report on the status of the uh, at easement at 2224 Burlington? Because I get the questions sometimes and I know you're back and forth working on that. Yeah, we to, uh, right. We still have to foreclose on that. That's going to take months. So um, I believe Aaron and Steve in my office were emailing about that recently, but we're, we're still right. working out from going through the core process. Yeah, I just wanted them to hear that from you. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Richard.
I missed the beginning of that. What was the address? It's listed as 2224 Burlington Avenue. So the right by it's River's Edge. River's, River's Edge, Edge area where the common area had not been deeded over. Oh, oh, oh Somebody okay. needed yeah. an easement across it. So yeah. we have to foreclose it, take, take ownership, give the easement for the sewer work and then turn it over to the HOA who was supposed to be taking right. supposed to have it. If you remember that complicated project. The, the audio broke up and I only heard a 200 number and I was trying to figure okay. out what was going on at the other end of town. Yeah, River's Edge. Yeah, okay, very good. Uh, all right, department heads, let's see. We've got Mr. Fenimore. Yes. Well, it looks like the snow has melted and just want to Are let everybody know. I, I, well, I just, yeah, <laughs> I wish. Uh, did that. I just want to let everybody know it's not going to snow no more the rest of the year because <laughs> I finally got the rubber cutting edge for oh, wow. the plow for the, for the loader. So uh, we won't be having any more snow. So you don't have like to worry. Buy an umbrella so it doesn't rain. I know. Right. Good deal, Good deal John. We've, uh, uh, it's just luckily that we've had, you know, uh, four new trucks and it made a, a big difference. Uh, we only had one truck go down that was one of the older ones. And uh, we had, you know, we got a couple of backups, so it didn't bother us. But uh, it, it, it's been a long process trying to get through. It seemed like every week we were coming down with a snowstorm and never being able to catch up. Uh, I noticed a lot of people were frustrated and thinking that we were done. You know, we go around, we try to get the snow back to the curves as best that we can. Uh, but then you have people that, uh, constantly throw snow out into the street, snow blow, uh, don't move their cars so we can clear, you know, along the curb. So when it starts to melt, that it runs along the curb and into the drain. And uh, it gets very frustrating, and I'm sure uh, when you try to get out and you can't get out of your street because it's, you know, not been plowed. But I tell everybody to be patient. We will be around until the snow is back to the curb line. Um, and it's, a, it's sometimes it's a, a quick process, but sometimes it's a long process. And uh, when things, uh, you know, it, it, there's only five of us here. And when you realize, if, if you could just realize how much ground we have to cover, uh, not only the main streets, but the county streets, we got to keep town hall cleared. We got to keep the gas pumps cleared. We try to help the school out. We try to help the firehouse out. Uh, there's, there's a couple of dirt roads, which are nightmares to try to get down and plow. So, um, you know, I tell people to be patient. We'll be around and we'll continue to go around even after the storm and then trying to uh, clean the storm drains out. So, you know, the water runs down good. It, it's a big, long process. And I'll tell you, my guys held up very good. Um, we were fortunate, didn't have any breakdowns. Uh, and we put out 68 ton of salt. That's, that's a quite a bit of salt for us to put out and we also um i don't know what i have to ask bev for the figure that we build the county and i'm sure it's well over ten thousand dollars that we will be getting back to help go back into our budget to help offset some of the costs so uh, and all that and we we got our new uh, batch of signs um for the uh, behind the wall in the street school, uh, we put up 26 new signs. So um, we, we're getting done on the street signs. We've almost been through the whole town now. We're very close to getting done, which uh, we had to do by the state orders. And that's about all I have. Well done, John. Thank you. Well done. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see, Mrs. Martin, administration, anything? Um, not that I have been informed of by Mrs. Lohr that she needed me to report on tonight. Okay, very good, thank you. 
Uh, I think we wrapped everything up there. All right, consent agenda items. Consent agenda items are considered to be routine, will be enacted with a single motion. Any item requiring discussion will be removed from the consent agenda. All consent agenda items will be reflected in full in the minutes. Are there any uh, items, any resolutions, or any questions about anything on the consent that someone wants has a question on or pulled out for separate consideration? Uh, 2021-46 should have the third paragraph after 425,000 should have square feet. Just has 425,000 of industrial space. I think it should, I think it means square feet, Doug, right? Um, Kate, are you talking about the resolution or the? The resolution. Yeah. 2021-46. It needs square feet next to 425,000. Yep. The third whereas. Agreed. Yes. So we're down to a B minus there now, right? Yeah. At least, I mean, at best. <laughs> All right. Okay, so I'll make that correction before it's distributed. Great, thank you. Eagle Eye okay. Fitzpatrick. Yes. And um, Mayor, I have one thing. Um, the resolution 2021-50, which is the uh, dog license refund. Yes. We were able to resolve the issue with um, Mrs. Bellin. Yes. So we will go forward and issue that tag. So they do not need to be refunded any any money. So I'll make that correction, but we'll stu still do that resolution just with that one correction. So we'll still read. Uh, yeah, there were two people on that. We will eliminate the one, but we can still move forward with that resolution. We'll just make that change. Any other questions or? Uh... Anything for a separate consideration? All right, here we go. A resolution 2021-44, issuance of contracts to the most qualified bidder to provide offsite inspection services. Resolution-45, authorizing pilot repayment agreement for the Abundant Life Fellowship Incorporated at Block 2200, Lots 201 and 3. Resolution-46, authorizing execution of a pilot agreement with GR Urban Renewal LLC. This is phase 2B, Stanker and Galetto project. Resolution-47, resolution to amend previous resolution 2020-71 uh, to correct assessment judgment amounts for properties. Resolution-48, refund of tax overpayment. Uh, resolution-49, uh, resolution to cancel and refund property taxes due to total veteran exemption pursuant to NJSA 54 colon 4-3.30, a excuse me. Uh, resolution-50, refund of overpayment, uh, payment of bills, current fund of $717,860.70, payroll $163,298.70, Dog fund, $40. Escrow trust, $6,650.25. Municipal open space, $507.15. Approval of minutes, January 25th, February 1st. And this includes the Board of Health uh, meeting and February 8th, 2021. Approval of department reports uh, and approval of the consent agenda. Motion, please. Still moved. Yeah. Second. But everybody was on mute there for a minute. Uh, motion by what, Mr. Brown, second by Ms. Fitzpatrick. Roll call, please. Sorry. Mr. Brown. Yes. Ms. Fitzpatrick. Yes. Ms. Holland. Yes. Mr. Olette. Yes. Mr. Templeton. Yes. <clears throat> All right, meeting is now open to the public for comments and questions, session two. As usual, state your name and address. Any questions or comments, please? Um, Mayor, there is nothing in the chat box again. All right, very good. Hearing and seeing none, this uh, public comment session two is now closed to the public correspondence. Uh, yes. We 
Mrs. Lohr received one piece of correspondence this afternoon, an email from Cameron Jenkins um, asking to be considered for the alternate position for the Recreation Committee. Um, as the REC liaison, uh, I'd like to move, I have, uh, REC has approved that member. I'd like to move to um, appoint Cameron Jenkins as alternate number two for the Recreation Commission. We need a all in favor or a roll call? Well, we need a second and then all we need in a favor. second. I'll, I'll second Mr. Jenkins. Thank you. Okay. All in favor, sufficient. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Welcome aboard, Mr. Jenkins. Okay. We will notify him. Thank you. All right. Start us a coronavirus disease, COVID-19, community impact. Uh, let's see. Um, the vaccination is moving along. Uh, it's the scheduling systems somewhat of a, um, a mess. Uh, there's about a dozen or 15 different scheduling systems in the county, in Burlington County. Uh, many people are finding better success in Camden or Gloucester County. Uh, there was an announcement that came out today from the governor's office uh, expanding, uh, let's see, beginning March 15th, following categories are now eligible. After March 15th, uh, educators, including support staff, pre-K through 12, child care workers, uh, public local transportation, public safety, uh, who are not sworn law enforcement, uh, migrant farm workers, tribal communities, uh, individuals in, uh, uh, experiencing homelessness or living in shelters. In addition, uh, on um, March 29th, there's another, uh, another bracket of eligibility, uh, food production, agriculture, distribution, elder care and support, warehousing and logistics and social services and elections personnel. Let's see, hospitality, medical supply chain personnel, postal and shipping services, clergy and the judicial. And that's effective March 29th for that second group. So um, things are slowly changing. Um, uh, uh, but, um, the, you know, general precautions still apply, masking, distancing, and, uh, um, be respectful of those that, uh, have not, uh, uh, you know, having the vaccine doesn't, uh, as far as the, the, the available evidence, you can still be a carrier. You just don't get it as bad being vaccinated, but you can certainly pass it on. So, um, the same cautions still apply uh, going forward. So, and there was a new set of quarantine uh, timeframes that came out February 4th, 15th from the Department of Health. And I did pass that on to uh, the school district and the court and uh, township admin and the police. So there's new, some new brackets for quarantine uh, procedures. Uh, let's see, and I think that's all I have for that. Let's talk about the executive orders. Township committee meeting for uh, March 15th. I assume we'll be back on Zoom. The question I think we have to consider is what, what criteria or what's the situation where we would be able to get back in the, in the meeting room? Uh, if uh, that's, uh, I mean, what, what milestone do, are we looking for or waiting for? Is that going to be the uh, termination of the uh, uh, emergency, uh, state of emergency for the COVID? Is that uh, uh, some directive from the governor? Uh, what, what are we looking for here in Delanco as far as when we can back, get back in the room or anyone thought about that? Or I don't, I don't know that we have an answer tonight, but I just, uh, that's something that we should be thinking about maybe. I'd like to throw something out there, Mike. Sure. Okay. I, uh, I think this format works better than the meeting room. A, I can hear everybody, see everybody. I can lay my papers out on my kitchen table. My filing cabinet is right here. Uh, I've never seen more people attend our township committee meetings as I do in this format. 
So I, I listen, I, I don't know. It could be the wave of the future. Um, I think certain events we should have in a public forum, but those days of, you know, even, you know, the public courtroom was to be tried by a jury of your peers, you know, looking on. Same thing with the uh, government meetings, you know, be open to the public so you can witness it. But before we started doing this, many, many townships started to televise their township committee meetings. And of course, a lot of people didn't watch it, you know, like CNN, I mean, C-SPAN, but uh, what a great way to uh, partake in this or, or to watch it. I see these recordings come up uh, on the Delanco Facebook wall. So uh, it, it, could, it could be, I don't know. That's my thought. It's not no, a bad thing. It's, it's a great uh, counterpoint that I, I think we've gotten used to this. And, you know, as the screen shows, we've got a, nearly a full house. You know, it's all on one page. Uh, and I think uh, going back into the room, we do not have the, the technical capability at this time to replicate this. Uh, being back in the room and, and being to stream it. Uh, uh, without uh, we tried it the one one or two times and it was it was somewhat awkward and uh, uh, I think you're right John I think you, there's a lot of good points to kind of maybe continue this regardless of what's going out on outside the door. Yeah, FYI, if you look in the capital budget, I did apply some funds for the unknown cost for technical help so that you could live stream your meetings if you decided you're going to have. The meetings there but still have the ability for people whether it's members of the board committee the professionals or the public to come in this format uh, we do have to find out how to technically do that we have some pricing for improving the acoustics of the room which is something that would be needed in order to make that technical sound just that disaster that one time so uh, yeah that is a question that you have to decide if we want to spend money to make that the future so that you can do a combination of in the room and through uh, the equivalent of Zoom. Yeah. I think, I think a lot of it's gonna depend on how many people we can have in the courtroom once they relax some of the numbers because, um, I mean, if we can have 25 people or or 50 people in the courtroom, why wouldn't we meet in person? I'm with John. I mean, we get more participation where we're at now. And I think people being able to log in through the Zoom process. And uh, I like the fact that I can see everyone's face also. And uh, I hear more clearly here uh, what folks are saying. Uh, you know, maybe we get we get back to that point where we have some meetings at, at town hall, but maybe this becomes the norm, and uh, the meetings at town hall become uh, a special event. You know, to honor someone or to acknowledge uh, certain folks. Uh, you know, whether it's uh, every other month, once every other month, or once a quarter. Uh, that's my opinion. My feelings at the moment. We'll just see if there's a state statute or uh, some constitutionality that might prevail in the end. Um, we'll sit back and watch, see what yeah. happens. Yep. Yeah, I mean, John, I will say that some of the some of the provisions that we're operating under were put in place as part of the state of emergency. Right. So it'll be interesting to see as it rolls out and we get past that whether there's a move then to sort of recognize electronic platforms, virtual platforms as a meaningful alternative as opposed to just a supplement to or, uh, you know, an actual replace, recognizing as a potential replacement of in-person meetings. I can say that of all the towns that we represent right now, I have one town that is still meeting in person, but also offer, offers a virtual platform. Uh, but their meeting room is, it's a smaller town. It's got a relatively small meeting room and the acoustics are, are a lot cleaner or easier to hear than in some of the larger uh, meeting rooms, including ours. 
Um, what I've found is when people are not in attendance as a sort of appearing on the Zoom platform on the side of the screen in the larger meeting rooms, um, it tends, the people who are in the room tend to do 90% of the talking, the people who are outside of the room, it's harder to participate. Mayor Templeton, may I read a chat comment? Would you like to hear a chat comment? Sure. Um, okay. Um, Ms. Dormo says, as a teacher in this visual environment, we could have more visual information sharing through this online platform. Like when you were talking about fencing, you could put up an image for everyone to see. Mm -hmm. It would be more information possibly for the public. Yeah, I think we're going to be living with this. Uh, uh, I, I don't think we're going to be leaving it, uh, uh, turning it off and going back into the room. I think there's going to be a mix of uh, what we what gets left over after uh, after we get through most of this. Any other comments on that uh, on that topic? We'll move on to the uh, discussion items. Oh, and Stephen Lohr agrees that public participation is healthy for a community. Thank you. Okay. What, what uh, was what was executive orders update number two on? Yeah, there, there. I think Janice had put that in. There, there was the only thing that came out. It, it was not an executive order. It was that uh, the latest one that popped in today was the uh, press release on the uh, the next two eligible groups. And then the other thing was the, uh, the health department, but that was not an executive order. Okay. So, Thank you. It was just a placeholder. Uh, yeah, I read it. Since there's uh, there's been so many, I think we're up to 200 or near 300. Anyway, discussion items. Uh, item one, Burlington County Planning Board requirement for block 1900, lots 502 and 503. These, this is the, the two Dolan parcels ordinance prohibiting quote uh, tractor trailer vehicles to make a right turn out of the site heading towards the town center. Uh, this was uh, one of the uh, conditions from the county planning board uh, for the site plan approval. Um, I don't know if Richard or Harry or Doug have any additional illuminating discussion about this. Yeah, the question, the question was number one, can we legally do that since it's from private property onto public property? And so if we do an ordinance, is it enforceable? And then the second question was, is there any physical issues dealing with that exit from Dolan? So Harry answered one. The lieutenant got some commentary from the prosecutor's office, passed it on to Doug. So maybe Doug and Harry can indicate whether or not that's something that is as simple as do what they're asking, pass an ordinance, and we'll be able to issue uh, tickets or whether or not there's anything we ought to do to change uh, how uh, the Dolan exit works. Uh, uh, Harry, I don't, uh, Doug, you know. I don't, Harry, you weren't recommending any change, were you? No. Nah. Yeah, I mean, so I think it's just a matter of I've got to get an ordinance. I'll try to get it for your uh, your March 15th agenda for introduction. And it will regulate this uh, this issue and allow for the enforcement. <clears throat> I, I, just, I have a concern. Coming out of Dolan, they will not be able to get over to Creek Road. Yeah, they, uh, will. they, they will be able to. They'll be able to, to come almost straight across okay. on Creek Road. And yeah, that they... was my question for Harry. Yeah, is there if you can't make a right, can you only make a left? And or would they be made to put the traffic light there, or would we have to incur that someday when it's uh, very congested there. Can't see these 18 wheelers are making a run across Coopertown uh, without maybe a traffic signal. That's, uh, yeah, that's, that's an issue and, and it technically would be the county, uh, county. Yeah. that would be involved in putting that light up. Okay. Yeah, we were surprised that they didn't require that the exit be directly in line with Creek Road, that they approved it being offset from it. That's, that's the county's discretion, I guess. Harry, what, what's the reason for the, for the prohibition on the right turn? Is that because of the angle of that roadway going in that it's 
it's it's a correct harper turn than a it's more than 90 degrees correct okay i think secondarily mike it's the county's traffic plan is to not allow tractor trailer truck traffic to head in that direction unless it's for uh uh you know local delivery so they're mm -hmm. trying they that was one of the conditions they don't want trucks headed in that direction even as through traffic yeah right. local delivery only so it's a combination of the two i guess well and, and the delanco bridge is that there's a weight limit which i think they would violate that weight limit and then if they head up toward beverly uh they have to get off at um oh god what is the street jesse's not here but we went through that with the truck right. traffic. manor road i think per perkins lane they can't I think it's Manor. They can't, yeah, they can't go on Perkins. I know that. They have to go up yeah. Manor Road, I think. Yeah, so the, the overall plan, I think we got a year ago, that plan book is to get everyone to head directly to 130 as most directly as you can. Right. I think it's a good idea myself. I'm glad. Well, as long as they can get over to Creek Road. They got to yeah. go to Wawa. Yeah, Harry says they can go to Creek Road. And Doug said that we can enforce the violations. So as long as those preclude, two things are good. It wouldn't preclude any trucks coming from Misfits or RLS or, FIS, or FedEx from going through town, correct? No. Yeah, that would be, unless we want to add no truck traffic past that point. That would be a separate issue altogether. Yeah. I just, I just want to point that out. Just Only point. Yeah. The, the truck uh, tractors leaving the Dolan, uh, uh, development and it would not bar any any uh, heavy trucks from any any anyone else uh, from from transit. Well, we do, we do have truck traffic up by the railroad tracks at uh, I believe it's Simon and Schuster rents uh, yeah. at the right. old Kaiser Gypsum plant. So right. we get yeah. some serious eighteen wheelers through here during the day. Yeah, but they're already physically there. The question that Mike points out: mm -hmm. if someone turns right for Misfits for Enterprise drive and continues that way we have nothing that says they're forced to turn left on creek road true All i'll right. ask i'll ask uh whether or not you want me to ask whether or not that's something we ought to look towards uh, i think we could we could look into that a little bit further but my recollection in looking at that issue once previously is if the roads can accommodate the trucks that it's not so simple for the town to simply say we're not going to permit that. Uh, We've got to assume that the snow right thing has to do with geometrics, not the plan to keep trucks from headed in that direction. Well, site plan is one issue. General public right of way and, and general road access is another. So we can control the right in, right out, or you know those kind of movements. But when we're dealing with a site plan condition, but once we have existing public rights of way, uh, you know what people do on those rights away uh, if the if the road is built such that it can accommodate the the vehicle weight i my recollection is we can't simply just say we're not going to allow it i think i think christy whitman ran into that problem several years ago oh, yes yeah, try to everybody try right. to get them off, off the local roads onto the turnpike mayor can i say something john go ahead john I think that Harry needs to look into this, okay, because this is going to be a mess. <laughs> There's no way that, I, it, first of all, we got to find out uh, what kind of trucks are going to be coming in and out of this. Are they going to be 18 wheelers or just general, you know, box trucks? Uh, that would help. But I mean, coming out and, and making a right or a left is going to be a problem because you have a long section of road that people are going to be speeding up okay and if you do, if if there's no going to be no light there i don't know how like an 18 wheeler is going to be able to to to, to come up and and if if they're going if they're going to make the left to go on to cooperstown you got a slight hill um like back by the garage that when you come up, uh, there's a lot of the, the speed of the cars. Sometimes they'll catch up to these tractor and trailers, and that's my um, uh, problem. 
with this. I mean, I, I would think that you would ha make them put a light in and have a, a you know, which would be an inconvenience. But I mean, we got to find out what kind of truck traffic is going to be coming in and out of here. And then we, we should be getting on the county and, and asking the county, what, what, what is their thinking on this? Yeah, I'm surprised. Is that size for box trucks? You know that. So you it's know tractor that. trailers. It's it definitely be tractor trailers. Well, it's, 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 you know, with the, the angled driveway, a driver is going to be, you know, nosing out there because they're not going to be able to see to the right, uh, looking to, to the north on, on Cooperstown Road. And so it's, it's. Correct. Correct. It says it's, it's, it's a, uh, it's a danger. The county is allowing a dangerous situation to, uh, to exist. I think somebody Earth. needs to speak up on this. Yeah. Unfortunately, John, I think. Limit. What about not, the speed limit? Can't they lower the speed limit um, entering? Because when you come, when you're going down Cooperstown Road, um, I always slow down anyway because of the people that are walking. But not everyone does because if I'm at that stop street trying to turn onto Cooperstown Road, um, those people really fly by there. So maybe they need to change the, the speed limit. I don't know, Harry. I think well, you. Kate, Kate, I, I agree that that would be a good approach. Um, and, and the situation we have is it, the, the, the plans were approved um, by the planning board. I assume that a traffic engineer testified that it was safe. It went through, they must went through that process. Um, right. We're kind of, kind, of, kind of getting in the game too late. Um, it's been approved, you know, that's what they're going to do. So we address it the best we can by making no right turn, uh, cause that's definitely not safe. Uh, right. I, I just found the county. section, pardon me. I just found the section in the planning uh, county's report. That is the reason for this it says under number six, uh, the purpose is to, for vehicles to not encroach into the opposing traffic lanes when making the turns into and out of the site. Right. So the problem with making the right turn is they'd have to cross the center line of Cooperstown right. to do that, whereas making the left, they were able to be able to do it. It's, it's the crossing, encroaching, blocking the road. Right. They, they just can't make a tight enough right turn. That's the right. reason, as right. opposed right. to not wanting them to go to the middle of town. Right. But I think changing the speed limit would have nothing to do with the planning, with the approval of the plans. I think that we could appeal to the county to lower the speed limit in that area it certainly would be worth a shot yeah I, I think that's a good idea um because it's it's going to be difficult um for track and trailer to pull out of there it is the traffic is the, the way it's designed right now i mean um, that's that's that road alignment is very similar to the road alignment up in chesterfield where the school bus was hit by the dump truck several years ago and there were several fatalities uh, yeah. it was an angled entry road and uh, a dump truck coming along on the, on the straight straight line section, and the bus was kind of nosing out, trying to trying to see, and uh, thought the road was clear. Um, yeah, yeah, this isn't quite as bad as that location, yeah. um, and and they do they are required to readjust their sight triangles to make sure that the sight distance is there. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it it's not a great situation. That's. No. No, I mean, it's irregardless of the sight triangle, if a driver on the left side of a truck, you know, at that angle, you just can't, you don't have any visibility. You're looking into the woods there behind Powerhouse is what you can see. So, yeah. All right. Um, I think lowering the uh, speed limit for Delanco Cooperstown Road uh, would also help down that uh, Misfits NBR uh, Enterprise Drive because you have tractor trailers coming out of there. And then, uh, yeah. Well, I'll ask the, uh, the, the chief uh, and Adam. Uh, All right. Yeah, I made a note of that. If that's yeah, feasible. Okay. Even Edgewater Park down at the blinking light, there uh, have been multiple accidents down at that uh, spot. And again, yes. lowering the speed limit may help um, cut back on some of those. All right. Um, All right. So, have an uh, or ordinance ready for the next meeting. We'll let because uh, the representative for Dolan wanted to know what the timeline is because they need 
check off on their list okay. that they're compliant. All right. Okay. And two, uh, New Jersey cannabis legislation. Mr. Heinold, I think this is. Yes. Uh, I did provide a, an overview of this when it was uh, sort of near the, near the finish line. We've had a, some brief discussions about it. I would ask the committee if there is any thought about how you'd like to proceed. Um, we have a six month window that has now started ticking as of Monday of last week uh, to make a determination as to whether we're gonna permit any of the uses that were permitted to either zone in or zone out related to cannabis. There are six subcategories. One of them is, is uh, delivery. We cannot prevent delivery within the township, but all of the other uses that range from um, manufacture all the way through to uh, retail sales are in the five other use groups, and those can be um, zoned in certain locations or prohibited as uses throughout as the committee sees fit. What, what does delivery look like? I don't know yet, to be honest with you. And I, 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 I think if, if you, if you have a prescription, uh, you know, and they deliver it to your house, you know, like Amazon or, but these or are delivery. Have to come, these are going to have to come. I, my, my guess is, and I don't, again, I don't know, but I, I would almost think that it's going to have to be someone who's going to be licensed in that category through the state. And so, it's and and the state has also been trying to get away from non-linear meaning they don't want one user to cover all use areas so i could foresee a delivery company saying we're going to be the ones that will pick up from a dispensary and we'll bring it to your house uh so what does it look like i don't know doordash with a different name i'm not really sure <laughs> Uh, there's going to be a million jokes about that one, I guess. Uh, yeah. Now, Doug, let me ask you this though, because basically it's, it's not, we have to succumb to one of these or two of these, or we have to allow all. We, we can choose any within those groups. We can choose none. So let's talk about it from a practical standpoint. If we talk about a grow facility, that's going to be in a warehouse somewhere in our industrial area. They want controlled envi environments. Um, depending on how much of the use they carry out there, it can get into processing uh, and actually turning it into the end product. Then that gets, can go into a distribution facility. So we could have no manufacturing in the town, but we could allow someone to have it imported in stored in a warehouse and then distributed out. And then lastly uh, is retail. And so, you know, if we're talking about retail, we have Burlington Avenue, we've got, you know, our retail sections, but is that, you know, is that appropriate for our town? Um, I'm not sure what the committee thinks about that. I, I'm mindful of the fact that we're still a dry town. I'm mindful of the fact that we still have a lot of the kids going to and from on Burlington Avenue for school. So is that, you know, and the other thing I would say is even if we zone for it, uh, if there are a limited number of retail licenses that are gonna be available throughout the state, those retail locations are most likely going to be on major highways. So even if we said we'd allow it, I don't think it would be very likely to land on Burlington Avenue. So I, I don't wanna presume what the committee thinks, but I, I'm not sure from a planning standpoint, at least on its face, I'm not sure it makes a whole lot of sense to say, this is something we really need to permit in any of the zones and we, sh we need to do this because we, we currently have a pretty active industrial zone. Uh, we've already um, set up redevelopment area. We've already got Dolan coming in. I'm not sure that 
the data suggests that we need to entice more users or expand the potential use groups to get more users. And then again, on the retail side, um, I think retail to me makes sense where somebody can drive up in a very commercial, solely commercial area, go into a retail establishment, get right back on the highway and get, get on their way without impacting you know, walkable residential combined areas. Um, so I'm not sure that I see on a planning front, and this is, you know, I'm the attorney, not the planner, but I'm not sure I see the real need to say we're going to jump into this new use that's being permitted by the state. Um, because I don't know that the benefits of it would outweigh the detriments, but, the, but that's the committee's call. And if somebody feels otherwise, now's the time for us to have that conversation so that we can talk about you know, if we are going to permit, permit anything, where would it be and how would that work? Well, I, you know, I, I, I got a few things to say and I, I hope I'm not out of line here, but you know, there was this thing called affordable housing that all the towns wanted to fight and say, Hey, you know, not, not my town, not my town. And look what happened to that. I have a feeling that if we say no to any of these, it's going to get slammed at us. And uh, then, you know, anybody can appeal the process and say, hey, I wanted to put a retail shop at the uh, camp meeting grounds and they won't let me. And then they're going to be allowed. So I, I, I don't think, and, and Doug, I have to disagree with you. When you say this is a dry town, that's alcohol. Okay, that's a different yeah. sentence. And you and I were together on this at one point and nearly got ran out of town for suggesting it. <laughs> okay, but, you know, the marijuana, it's a statewide thing. And as far as morality, that was all taken away with that with that referendum, you know, and the governor signed in the bill last week. So it's going to be allowed. And, and that's just and I really think we need to allow for it somewhere. And I don't really want to fight it. Um, I, you know, allowing it in the industrial zone for cultivation or distribution. Um, you know, just listen, we put it there doesn't mean we have any space available. Okay. Me personally, I see that camp meeting ground down there struggling, struggling, can't get tenants in there. Go over to Riverside and see that little vape shop on the corner, what they did with the bank. Vaping is no good for you either, okay, but it's legal. And cigar shops are legal. Tattoo shops are legal. You know, are they moral? Um, that's debatable, but they're legal and they are allowed to be somewhere, so. Well, I have a different opinion. Um... I see that Edgewater Park's going to do something with a dispensary. Riverside was going to do something, and I believe they were thinking of purchasing that uh, bank uh, at the end of Scott Street, which would also have a drive-in. Um, I, I don't think this is something Delanco needs to... I, I, I don't believe that if we say no, that they're going to fight us to come in here. I'm sorry. I don't believe that. I have a little more faith in the law and the ordinances that we're going to put on our books. I personally don't believe that we need to deal with this, that our police department needs to deal with it. And I think when we talked about it some time ago, uh, Jesse had his own opinions about it. And um, I, I don't think this belongs in Delanco. I'm sorry. I don't Out of agree. all categories, Kate, all the all categories. categories. I don't think we need any part of it in Delanco. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, I, I don't see, I've, I've, I've looked, uh, not recently, but uh, when we had this discussion, uh, I think earlier last year, um, I had looked at, uh, you know, some reports that came out of uh, states that have got a couple of years under their belt with this stuff, Colorado, uh, I think Washington state, uh, and, uh, and it, it's, uh, I, I, I think there's, 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 there's a, there's a bit of a gold rush for it. There's a lot of people that are going to make a lot of money in it. Um, and, uh, but I think it's, it's, uh, it tends to be a general negative for small communities. Um, but, but do we ignore that referendum that passed by a lot? I mean, the voters voted. 
And well, my, my question with regard to that would be, what percentage of the Delanco residents voted yes? Was it, I mean, 71% of the state of New Jersey voted yes. But what percentage of Delanco residents voted yes? I'd like to get that figure, and I've yet to get that from the county, um, the breakdown of the last election. They the haven't question. given us that. Uh, I don't think, uh, uh, Kitty, you can check with Janice, but I don't think we've ever received the breakdown on that question um, at the percentage of residents that voted in favor of it for Delanco. And well, even if they were, say, 51%, I respect the police department in this town, and I respect the their... Police, the police were just told to back off of marijuana, let go of all the cases that are pending. Right. So they're, they're done with marijuana. I think, right. I, think, I think you're allowed to have six ounces of marijuana on you, which, yes. you know, a friend told me that's quite a bit. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, going forward, do you want this to be our, our uh, be all end all discussion on this? Or do you want to advertise a, 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 a more full, a broader discussion at, at, a, at a meeting in a month or so? Yeah, I think we should and advertise it uh, as such. So we get a little more community input. Uh, uh, and I'd be interested to see what percentage of the residents of Del just Delanco voted yes. I, I would be interested in seeing that. Well, as, as far as making a, a decision that uh, uh, Mr. Heinhold seeking uh, and what, what direction, you know, what, what path we want to go on uh, here, how much, to, whether it's all, all or we're going to, you know, pick one or two uh, uh, venues, commercial uh, commercial venues for this, but uh, do we want to have a, a dedicated meeting to do that? Well, uh, let's do a straw vote. Who wants to have a dedicated meeting to decide? Ask everybody. I don't Instead, think we need a dedicated meeting, but have it, uh, well, maybe it is a dedicated meeting where uh, it's in the uh, open public comment or discussion part of a particular meeting. Uh, you know, oh, as, it, as, as you know, put that topic as as a discussion item at the front of the meeting. Um, you know, if we don't have any ordinances to, to to handle at that time, but put it up front and uh, get the word out and just try to get a little more public input on what people think about it. I, I think that's Doug, Doug. What is this six month window? So the, the statute says that you have six months to determine your, your own fate, basically. And unlike other uses, the statutory scheme was set up to allow towns to either opt in or opt out. So that, that's built in. Um, you know, it's, it's an unusual approach, but it's what the statute permits. So a town can say, we're not going to permit it. And, and in fact, I'll give you an example, uh, Medford Lakes, where I live and where I'm also the borough attorney, um, the percentage of people who voted to pass it in Medford Lakes was higher than the state average. Wow. If you've ever been through Medford Lakes, that would probably not surprise you all that much, but the, the reality is, is there's, it's almost an entirely residential uh, community. There's no industrial area. There's, there's one commercial street uh, PJ Willihan's restaurant and the trail that runs behind it, where the kids ride their bikes to school, which is mandatory in Medford Lakes because you, there's no busing. So the borough, despite the fact that the residents are in favor of the concept as a, an approved statewide concept, uh, the, the committee uh, councils has determined that it's not, there's no suitable use location in, in the borough. Um, so I think if we, if we have, we, we need to move forward on this to make a determination. What are we going to do? Are we going to say no across the board? Or are we going to say yes? And if so, where does that yes get drawn? And, and where are we going to permit what uses? Doug, um, if they make no decision in six months, what happens? No, we, we've got to do something to within do something. six months. We have to affirmatively say this is what we're going to do. Otherwise, I think there's statutory presumptions about what we're, right. we're sort of defaulting to permit, to permit, permit right. uses. Yeah. That's my understanding. It's yeah. the default 
if you don't prohibit, it's automatically permitted. Right. right. So it's I think automatic opt in. Yeah. So I, I think I really would hate to make this decision tonight. Let's yeah. You know, we start a lot of gravy on the stove. Let's let right. it simmer. Let's hear the people of Delanco. You know, maybe there's a few ingredients to put in. You know, before we take this staunch <laughs> hard line, like you know, oh God, it's we're you know we're a dry town. I know so many people that smoke marijuana. And, and it blows me away that it's, it's not just the hippie looking guy, it's normal business people and they've been doing it for years. Uh, maybe it's time we open our minds and uh, nobody ever answered my question on, well, how do you stop a marijuana user driver? And how do you charge, uh, you know, with that? Nobody's, there's so many questions nobody answered. But it's, legal it's, it's, it's out of our control. Yeah, you want to talk about heads exploding. That's that's the side of the legislation that yeah. people's heads are exploding. Yeah, but I, I, I'm not trying to come with it as, as to any judgment. But what I, what I do think is if we're going to have a further discussion, at some point we do need to bring in uh, Scott and Michelle Taylor for, from a planning perspective. Because again, anytime we talk about any planning and permitting any uses, um, I think it is important to keep focused on what's the benefit uh, that will be ultimately conferred on the municipality. If the, if the consensus of the committee is, is that, yeah, that would be a fine use and we could use more retail and this would add to the retail uses, that's fine. Then, then let's, where, where are we gonna draw the parameters and the lines around that? Same thing on the industrial zone. If we wanna allow it, okay, but let's start talking about where that makes sense and how to draw the lines around it. And for that, I think we need to get into planning discussions. And the incentive it, that the state has put is, if you allow it, you get a piece of the taxes. So one has to, I don't it, know anything about how to calculate that, but it, it, is one of use medicinal, Doug? I mean, is medicinal one of these uh, groups no. that no. no okay no no <clears throat> this it's is a, this is full on no all recreation part anymore all so right can we just move this discussion uh, to um i don't know april we're going to be presenting our budget probably richard yes maybe we should move it to may and make some decisions in the meantime do your homework yeah and make some decisions in may I made mine. <laughs> oh, that's, uh, yeah. I have, two points on, I have two points. One, uh, I would just uh, not allowed to have retail, but I would be very considerate of looking at uh, distribution as far as uh, a warehouse uh, in our industrial zone uh, to consider that. Uh, and then the others, I would not. Not, not growing or right. uh, producing. Well, let's uh, follow on with Kate's idea. We'll put it, uh, pencil it in for uh, uh, in May and uh, individually we'll do our research and uh, uh, we'll talk about it briefly at the April, uh, excuse me, yeah, the April, is that right? Yeah, April meeting as far as uh, what to do to advertise it and get the word out and maybe some educational stuff uh, for the public uh, we can disseminate. But anyway, uh, everybody seem to like that idea or that timeline? Mm -hmm. Yes. Sounds good. Right. Are we okay to uh, get some proposals or input from our planners as Doug had suggested? Spend some money to have uh, it, it, tailors give us some input? If we get closer to May, I'd want to have a sense sometime after the April meeting if people want to really explore any particular uses, if there's a consensus amongst the committee to say, yeah, we're, we're really thinking about that, then I'd say let's get them. All right. Them in yeah, does, this, does this have to go through uh, the master plan uh, review process through the Joint Land Use Board? It would, it would be a zoning ordinance amendment, so it would get right. referred to the, get referred to the, the uh, Board. Does yeah, that so this that... month time frame? You got a you're pretty tight. Yeah, that's a month. Yeah, that's a good month. Sometimes look, it's two months for the fence. Well, does that Doug? Does that all have to be completed by the 180 day clock? Yes. Yes. We got to have our ordinance on the books. Yeah, so it has to be prepared. So you have to determine: Do you want to prepared and run through the process and then get input? You don't have the input and then say, okay, we got 30 days to write the ordinance, get it through the board, and get it public hearing and adoption and so on. 
Okay. Uh, so we really don't have as much time as you think. No. So when are we presenting the budget, Richard? The first meeting in April or the second? Hopefully the first meeting. If you come to a conclusion at your uh, May 22nd, uh, March 22nd meeting, then we would get it together. My notes indicated that uh, we're not having our meeting in April until the second Monday. I'm not, I'm not sure if I accidentally wrote the wrong thing down. No, Whether I think you're right, because I think- We delayed it for some reason. That's so correct. I'll check that. Easter Monday or something, somebody yeah, said. Instead of having it on Easter Monday, we're having it the following week. So I think the yeah. 12th or something. Well, the 12th, 12th and the 19th. So that's when, so that's, that's when we talk about introducing the budget. You have the public hearing on the budget, the May meeting, and adopt the May meeting. So one is introduction. It may be, usually introduction is not where the major discussion is. So if you wanted to have the input in April, maybe the second meeting in, in April uh, for, for this, but then if you're gonna have the ordinance, you would have the ordinance probably in May, same time as your budget. But that mean, would you, work. Know, you know, you gotta do that. Maybe that would work. Have yeah. it at we the second meeting wrapped, in April. We have to have everything wrapped up by August 1st. I would say so. Right, I think it's August 1st or prior to that. I would have it prior to that. Yeah. Yeah, well, she's, she's talking about legally 180 days. Not sure what that date is. The other thing is we've received two, maybe three emails directly to us from people interested in developing and wanting to meet with you and so on. We've just ignored them. And I guess if somebody presses it, the answer would be if, you know, if somebody wants to come to a public meeting, I think that's the way you handle that stuff. Come to a public meeting. There are no such thing as yeah. having someone come in and have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with uh, the local officials. I think that would be the only option, but don't be surprised have these developers and, and professionals who are soliciting developers to come in and try to ask you in advance, what are you going to do? Yeah. So I think our answer would be, hey, you come to a public meeting, you can hear the same thing as the public, I guess, right? Right. right. That's how we did it before. Yeah. So at the, when are we looking at the second, uh, second meeting in April? Second meeting in April, yeah. Second meeting in April. Yeah, maybe that's what we ought to do. All right, so everyone uh, start Googling around and do some, do some homework and research and uh, ask around and see what other towns are doing and uh, come into the April, uh, was the April 19th meeting uh, with a full uh, quiver. Okay, I'll have some discussion with uh, Michelle and I'm going to find out a little bit more about how you calculate the the tax information, so at least you know, that's intended to be the, you know, the encouragement is that uh, there will be some income if, in fact, somebody actually has a facility in your municipality. Yeah, I think it's that's uh, the carrot. So, so a question: Is the April nineteenth meeting? going to be where you're going to be asking for public input. So you yes. want to, so ahead of time, you're going to have to decide how you want to handle that. Correct. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, we'll discuss that as the weeks go on here. All right, uh, item three, property maintenance issues, snow removal, commercial parking lots and properties. I think this was focusing on the camp meeting shopping yep. center. Yeah, my, yeah, I brought this up. Um, I asked to have this put on the agenda. My battery's running out, but uh, um, that camp meeting ground is a disgrace to our town. And if we have to do something to the ordinances, to tighten up what it looks like. It needs to be painted. Parking lot has potholes. Mr. Patel at the 7-Eleven actually filled in some of the potholes. They were so bad. Um, the landlord doesn't answer any of their calls. Uh, the snow plowing was terrible. And I think our ordinance gives them 12 hours, but it wasn't done within 12 hours and- That's on public sidewalks, not on park, public. Private parking lots are not covered. We could not find anything that covers actually requiring Somebody's, parking of 
But if, yeah. the, if the public, if the public is using it, that's yeah. a safety issue. Uh, I, just, right. uh, I think all businesses should be made to fall under the right. same parameters as the sidewalk because the people are using I, it. I agree, but that's not what our code provides. Well, if that's we our code. If expand it to say, well, if the sidewalk has to be shoveled, shouldn't your parking lot also have to be plowed? And there's nothing specific about that. It, it, it's not very well crafted no. if we were gonna try it. And you have to give notice. We talked about what if Public Works does it and they have to like cutting the grass. Right. Well, we have to give 10 days notice. So I guess well, if the snow is there early in the season, maybe it might work, but certainly if it melts, you give 10 days notice before we can even go in and plow. I know. So I think we got to change that if we want to do what Kate's suggesting. Yeah. yeah, I think we need to tighten up on any business in town. Look at the other businesses along Burlington Avenue that we have. We have a new uh, business pied out. We have an ice cream shop. We have Loose Deli. We have Shirley Rossi Realty. We have her flowers shop. All of those businesses are well kept and well maintained. They're all painted. They look nice. Uh, and this place looks terrible. They still have no trash cans. The trash is a problem. It needs to be, the sidewalks alone around the buildings need to be power washed. It's a total disgrace. It's no wonder it's vacant because it's, who would want to be in there? Yeah. The, uh, mean, the owner, uh, uh, Mr. Marks uh, is, uh, doesn't return any phone calls. He usually takes, there's a recording. Uh, I leave messages. He's about a year behind on the sewage authority fees for all the tenants there. Uh, I think he's in arrears for two or three quarters on property taxes as well. Um, uh, so he's uh, unfortunately a, a problem property owner in town. He's a slumlord, excuse yes. me. <laughs> That's what he is. He's a slumlord. And I think that if we need to amend our ordinances to be able to enforce, because listen, if somebody has chipping paint on their house, it's in our ordinance that they can be noticed because I know we did that to someone and I, I, I remember they were very upset about it. So why can't we do something to this business? All right. Well, um, I want to uh, ask Doug. Uh, Doug, with all the uh, town, townhome complexes we have in town with homeowners associations, uh, you know, Newton's Landing, they hire their own contractor uh, to do sidewalks and stuff. If, let's say, um, you know, uh, River's Edge, Newton's Landing, um, they all of a sudden, they didn't hire the contractor to shovel their sidewalks. Do we have a right to cite a homeowners association? Because this, this complex down here is sort of a, a condominium where those folks are paying the rents uh, and they share in common uh, the maintenance. So uh, it's a little bit different because we're talking about public rights away versus a private parking lot. But it's a little surprising to me because the liability that attaches to a commercial property owner in a snow event, an ice event, is very high. So they're really acting against their own best interests uh, by not addressing snow and ice in a timely fashion. Um, we, I can look into whether we can expand into, you know, uh, covering an ordinance to enforce uh, and, you know, basically say almost like, uh, Richard, I, I don't know if you've ever seen anything less. I have not, but the, the, I've never seen it. Almost like a, if you haven't cut your grass, we're going to go in and cut it for you theory. Right. Yeah. Um, but you got to do it within 12 hours, not 10 day notice. Right. Without notice, right. I've and, never and, seen the ability to enforce or to be able to get your money back yeah. if you spent money without notice. And, 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 and on top of that, now where there's this high level of liability that attaches to commercial property owners for snow and ice events, the township would be inserting itself in that Correct. activity, which is not exactly desirable. Right. Well, what about just the property maintenance of it alone? I mean, uh, yeah. property no, maintenance, it's, it's not being enforced. Yeah, I mean, I think that's sort of the, where I would fall back on is, is that if this is an ongoing problem, this has to be something that our zoning officer, code enforcement officer is told to 
make a, just a regular part of. You have to, every time you, you see an issue out there, enforce it. And we have to be on top of this property owner because they've proven that they're not going to do it on their own. All I got from property maintenance, from code enforcement, was that the police were trying to uh, have him do the lot. He didn't do the lot. I'm sorry. It melted. It was horrendous. But I don't, I don't think we have anything that deals with the snow. The If you're talking about the painting and the trash can, those are enforcement issue code things. Trash one's a little, but painting, we I didn't hear about, but but the snow removal thing, there's absolutely nothing in the code that allows us to cite somebody for not removing snow on a private parking lot. Well, then Whether we need to put job, we, we store need to or in front of there. And if you're going to host township residents in their cars and you, you have a um, hazardous uh, parking lot that you can be cited. I, right. Because, you know, all of our... Residents are using that 7-Eleven. I mean, I use the Dunkin' Donuts. Can I gotta get my It's a sheet of ice. And, uh, and the post office, our, our United States post office is in the corner. Well, um, let's, let's uh, defer and see if uh, we can find something uh, that, that, that would apply to that and, uh, okay. and put extra emphasis on the code enforcement. And, uh, and I'll uh, call Mr. Marks uh, uh, I'll ring him up tomorrow and see if I can get through to him once again. And Send get him attention. Next item, uh, temporary parking for Burlington Avenue storefronts. Uh, this has come up for the 500 block, uh, I believe it's the 500 block of Burlington uh, on the westbound side. Uh, new business uh, had made the inquiry to uh, for two or three uh, spots, uh, limited uh, 10, 15 minute parking um, for a very popular new business, if that was possible. So um, I was oh, out there the other day and, and uh, the officers were tape measuring distances and uh, from the intersections and so forth and the width of the, uh, um, the side, uh, I can't think of the word, whatever. Uh, the travel I, uh, I stopped there yesterday um, yeah. to to, uh, to shop, even though they had nothing left. Um, yeah. But I saw those signs. I, I saw the sign, no parking this side. And and it just dawned on me like, well, why on my block, the 600 block? Hey. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let me tell you, as a business owner, if I did not have parking right out in front of my store, I'd be out of business. Uh, that is my ace in the hole because it is a shop and go society. People want to, they want to stop, park, get out there their business and leave. Okay. And uh, I was very surprised to see, I don't know when that happened. I know Jesse's on vacation, but there's plenty of room on the side of the road down there to park. I don't understand. Yeah, that's why right. Adam, the, it's a Adam smaller shoulder. Engineer. Yeah, it's a smaller shoulder, John, than what you have. But I is had it? asked that we look into it. Um, what have you got, Richard? Uh, I guess, I, guess Adam. I think that uh, Adam sent an email to everybody he about did. his discussion with Marty Livingston, county engineer, yeah. about uh, what's required in order to uh, justify allowing parking there. It's up to you guys, but it's up to whether or not it meets the criteria. Yeah, he said uh, in that, did, it, did everybody got it, right? Because I had asked that it be put on the agenda. And so Adam went and contacted him and he said um, that he didn't think that the, um, the frontage is only seven feet wide, which would only allow compact car parking. And he said the police would also have to look into New Jersey Title 39 parking laws which require a certain amount of feet for cars to park near intersections, private driveways, public driveways, et cetera, as well as the safety concerns that could be presented with allowing cars to park on the shoulder in that location. So, but in the beginning, he said that it really could be our decision, but I think you need Adam and Jesse or somebody uh, from the police department present to discuss this further. Um, I mean, in general, your decision, meaning the county would not be the one to make the decision. You would do right. it by ordinance, but you can't, but you, whatever you do 
has to comply with state statute. Right. So That's why they do all that stuff, just as, as Harry had to look at Enterprise for the right. no parking there, he would be working with them as to whether or not there was any areas that would le you could legally park and still meet Title 39 of the state statute. In that right. case, then, you do an ordinance that permits it. You don't have to get the freeholders to agree. That's the, that's the bottom line there. Right. But, so they're, they'll start working on that, I guess. Everyone would encourage that. The police will work with uh, our engineer and see if there's a possibility. Well, let's, let's be careful about this because uh, if you find something that the street's not wide enough and parking in the 600 block is not permissible, we've kind of created a problem here. You see what I'm saying? It, I don't think we're looking for parking. Parking, we're looking for 15 minutes parking it's a difference than parking at your car all day and i don't think um, that makes a difference under this circumstance under the time is not important because it's a visual thing harry could probably explain more so people you don't want to have accidents because people can't have sight distance it's all right, related but, to sight distance whether it's 15 minutes or all day doesn't make a difference but if as, as you go but as you drive on burlington avenue the shoulder on that side of the road gets narrower as you turn the curve and go across the bridge there's not a shoulder hardly at all so um it would be interested if the police would look into uh and maybe harry new jersey title 39 to see if if it's at all possible uh, they suggested they enlarge their parking lot marty livingston that's what he suggested that maybe yes. they move their parking lot back yes I said, let's just be careful that uh, that we don't scratch open something that creates uh, the need to eliminate street parking as it exists right now in the 600 block. Well, thank you, Mike. But uh, there there was a time where the county wanted to move the uh, the parking on the opposite side of my well, street, center line. and uh, I I I fought like heck. I said, listen, the bank has a parking lot, I need that parking out front or they're gonna kill yeah. me. And, uh, but right. the, the county had approved uh, all that parking along because the church needs it and, yeah. and I yeah. need it. And the school needs it to drop the children off, um, you know, across the street. So I was very surprised. I pulled in front of the place, I parked and then I saw the sign. I said, hey, I'm yeah. parked illegally here. I didn't, right. I didn't know it. I didn't know it was a no parking there. So what's the next step? I think we leave it to the police and, and working with Harry to right. make yeah. a recommendation of what's possible. Okay. You all right. seem to want to make it happen if it can happen. If, right. it can happen. Uh, if they can make it happen legally. Okay. Yeah. And that's what we'll do. Very okay. good. Next, uh, status of Burlington County Trail Project. Uh, we kind of talked about some of this with the uh, 200 ash. Uh, uh, Richard, you had attended a meeting a month or so ago. I went to yeah. one over in Abaco Island uh, about two, three weeks ago with a couple of the contractors and Steve Lennon from uh, Taylor Design. Uh, they're starting over on the Delran uh, Riverside section. Uh, there are some areas that depending on what contractor, what specialty that contractor's doing, they may leapfrog ahead. Um, as we discussed, uh, uh, or, talked about earlier uh, using the 200 ash uh, we suggested that that might be a useful location that they can pre-position some uh, materials or a, you know <coughs> park a vehicle there uh, temporarily and so forth so um, do you have anything more to add or want that Richard or well yeah that was a good summary the the point is I want to make sure the rest of the governing body is aware of, of uh, what's going on and then we had an exec because that dealt with an agreement dealing with target action. We certainly can talk about it here, not not necessarily an exec. But you should all, you're aware that the, the county is having this trail project starts at Amico Island and ends at Pennington Park. A portion of that trail is along our sidewalks. And any place where it's along our sidewalks, Buttonwood, Rancocas, if the sidewalk is unsafe, they're replacing the sidewalk. Uh, and in particular, if you remember, Janice brought to our attention, we 
own 200 ash, but on the Rancoca side, the sidewalk's unsafe. Turns out that's going to be 100% replaced by this project, uh, as well as the block between the next block back to Buttonwood and the next blocks, uh, amongst other places. So when we were at this pre-construction meeting, they were asking where can they store material, they call a laydown area, store material, occasional vehicle. They are going to be wanting to do that uh, near the Delanco train station at the end of Field of Dreams. There's a section of the county property beyond where we're even doing the event lawn uh, in Pennington Park itself. Uh, at the end of Pennsylvania where they're going to do a path underneath the bridge. So they're going to use those areas near where they're doing construction. And one of the things we want to do is encourage them to do as much work in Delanco as possible that would be the trail but also help things out. And uh, so that's where the idea of letting them use the outside, not the inside of the building, but the yard, which is a fenced area, 200 ash, because they're going to be doing a lot of work there in that area and would be convenient. And one of the things we hadn't looked at is what they might do in order to use that that might make an improvement, maybe better fencing, more security, maybe cleaning up some areas. We haven't decided on that. They just today uh, sent us a, a, a lease agreement where they actually want to sign up, have us agree that they can use that property for a minimum of six months uh, but there's no detail on it. They give the whole harmless. That's the legal end. But we haven't negotiated with them what we'd allow them to do. Uh, Harry and Mike have been on the site. I'm just dealing with paperwork. But I just want to make sure you're all aware of it and see whether everyone is supportive of us working with the county and the contractor, Pearson, uh, to let them use the property. And hopefully we get some benefit from it. Uh, one of the things that Harry brought up was that there's they're doing work on the sidewalk, but they're not doing uh, handicap ramps to cross Rancocas, for example. And their answer is, well, but that's not their plan. They only have to worry about going along it, not crossing the road. And so therefore they don't have to do that. They're gonna give some pricing that while they're there, if we want them to do a little bit beyond, we may have to pay for that. So we're gonna find out what that costs. The, uh, uh, the sidewalk at Buttonwood, as it gets to Rancocas, there's a major grade problem that if they were to have to lower the Buttonwood sidewalk so you could cross Rancocas as opposed to making a right turn, which is all they're going to do, they'd have to make significant physical changes. And so they're going to work and give Harry information. We'll bring that to you. But in the short term, uh, does anyone have any objections if we allow them to use the 200 ash property since we're obviously not going to be doing something with that property uh, in the next six months? Does anyone have a, any objection? Obviously, we'll try to get as much benefit as we can from it, but it may be that we're just being uh, useful to help the county's contract get the job done quickly and efficiently for everyone's benefit. And Harry and Mike, I don't know if you have any comments to add to that. No Harry, objection, that, Graham. That Buttonwood Street, if they're gonna do something on Buttonwood Street, that one corner, um, do you remember the resident that was concerned yeah. about that yeah there it knows yep all right so we're not so we'll be bringing that, that back when harry gets the information from them on what alternates they would have and what that cost would be as to whether we want to participate or not but uh, that is probably the only major issue but uh so if there's no objection we'll negotiate something with them for the 200 ash usage and you know, we'll bring it formally to you for a resolution prior to the next meeting. I have no objection. Okay. Any questions about this project? There's more information that you want to know. I don't know how much detail you want, but the the route is on the website and we have all the plans and detail and anyone who wants to know anything about it, we got it. And we have a, construct, a construction status meeting every two weeks on Zoom. So... We're trying to keep on top of it the best we can so we can answer questions when our residents contact us. Yeah, they, um, I spoke with a contractor today and, and they indicated they're looking for a notice to proceed in a month. So they're not going to even be starting any, any work at all on the project for at least a month. Okay. I mean, it, it does mean that, that uh, they, during 2021, 
any decision you make eventually about 200 ash would probably not be able to be implemented if we've given them the right to use it unless we say listen if we decide that we're going to use the property we're going to demo the property we're going to fix the property and you're in our way then you got to get out which is what i would suggest we put in there that yeah. that's not an, it's not an exclusive use it's not a guarantee if we need it you know we we'll have to kick them out we'll give them 30 days notice right. something like that i think that's probably reasonable but the chances are fairly slim that that would be uh, an issue between now and September, for example. Even if you're ready to go out to bids for demolition and so on, it probably wouldn't happen until then, you know. Right. By the time we write specs and go out to bids and get everything rolling, so. As just another a point of interest, um, uh, Pearson is the contractor, the GC for this project. Right. I've done several demolition jobs with them in, in the city of Camden. Um, oh. They, that's one of the, they have a whole department that just does demolition. How about um, that? <laughs> it's just something to keep in mind. If we go that route, we can, we can maybe work something out. Okay. Too yeah. big. Unfortunately, it's public bid by itself. I don't think we work that much out, but maybe while they're there, if there's anything that, uh, Harry, you guys think they could do that will make the property safer in the meantime, or eliminate a future cost that they could do it's part of the thing, something we're going to have to get rid of anyhow, or right. something tied to what uh, we've got to do the environmental stuff. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that they could do to improve that situation so it's less costly at the time we have to do it? That would be a useful quid pro quo. Right. So these guys are pretty smart. They'll figure something out. Good point. All right. All right. Uh... All right, last discussion item, status of Route 130 corridor plan. Um, if you remember back in early December, uh, there were, the Bridge Commission had sent us a questionnaire for this uh, Route 130 corridor uh, uh, endorsement that uh, uh, they wanted some input and uh, uh, I worked with uh, Janice and Kitty uh, and basically did a lot of cut and paste from the uh, master plan and re-examination report and some other township documents and got that to the bridge commission to Tom uh, uh, Steny Kynas down at the, the bridge commission is the, the remaining planner down there. Um, anyway, uh, the upcoming parts of that uh, for the plan reendorsement process, and there's a whole two page listing here, um, is uh, one of the things uh, the, right now there's a 190 page uh, municipal self-assessment uh, document that uh, I've been going through with uh, Mrs. Martin. Um, and it's got uh, uh, a lot of census data, a lot of demographic data that uh, uh, the Bridge Commission planners have compiled uh, for all the 12 communities that are part of this. Um, and we're just kind of combing through that for obvious errors and so forth. Following that, uh, what they want is from each of the 12 communities is a, a, a committee appointed by the governing body um, composed of a committee member, uh, someone from the planning board, a uh, class four member, um, some members of the public, uh, environmental, land use, shade tree, um, about a half dozen individuals to participate in moving this forward over the next couple months and through the summer. Um, there's no end uh, completion date on this uh, as yet. Uh, it will occur 180 days after the uh, uh, emergency order is, uh, is rescinded. So that's when the clock starts. Uh, no relation to the cannabis legislation, uh, but it seems to be a, a similar date. But anyway, um, there's uh, multiple steps in this uh, process uh, and basically this document ping pongs back and forth between the municipalities, goes through the Bridge Commission, up to the State Office of Planning Advocacy, comes back to us and hopefully at the end of the, uh, uh, by the end of the this calendar year, we'll have something uh, that this, uh, basically it's a master plan for the Route 130 corridor it's uh, it's a lot lot of uh, regenerated information that's in uh, in our master plans already in the reexamination report. 
but it does allow uh, at the end for us to be able to check the box on applications for grants or programs or all kinds of things at the state level that yes, we are participating in this regional plan. So that's, that's really the, the end goal of it all is to be able to check those boxes on those, uh, on those forms. So um, sometime in the next couple of weeks uh, uh, at uh, one of our meetings, we'll be, uh, have to designate uh, or ask for uh, volunteers to participate in this, uh, both as I said, from uh, planning board and other uh, um, boards and commissions, volunteers in our community and from the general public. So to participate in this, uh, this endeavor. So that's, um, that's where it is right now. At tomorrow night's uh, Joint Lane Use Board meeting, uh, Mr. Claus, who used to be a member of the Joint Lane Use Board, uh, had put together an extensive report uh, dealing with the Route 130 area and the traffic we have with uh, trucking that comes down Creek Road. Uh, that's supposed to be reviewed tomorrow night, and if that document is ready, then uh, we'll be bringing a copy of that to the Township Committee uh, for your review and see if we can tack that on to uh, the report that we need to send uh, that Mike just spoke of. Yeah. Yeah, this is a follow-on to the, uh, the original document was done in 1999, and uh, uh, a fair amount of what was what was planned and foreseen in that document did, has come to pass. Um, obviously, along the way, there's been some growing pains and some adjustments and uh, some things that uh, weren't thought all the way through as, as uh, you know, things as little as sidewalks to our industrial zone or uh, the proximity of an industrial park uh, in the backyard of a, of a residential, an R1 zone. So. Um, things like that were kind of the rough edges, but uh, anyway, this is the follow-on to that, and it's it's a long process, and uh, uh, hopefully, we'll get some good input and get uh, get something that really represents where where Delanco is and where we want to go. So, um, any questions right now? I'll circulate some of that through Richard, and just so you can kind of see what the what the general layout is uh, uh, of, of a timeline. There aren't specific calendar dates as of now, uh, but just as far as the steps in the process uh, uh, to keep you up, you know, informed as to what what is supposed to happen. Uh, anybody have anything else? Otherwise, uh, we need a resolution for executive session. So moved. Second. What's the resolution number? Okay, that's going to be number resolution number 51, 2021-51. Right. So we had a motion by Ms. Holland, a second by Ms. Fitzpatrick, I believe. And uh, Aaron? Yes. Can you take us away? <laughs> beam us into the, uh, the, the, the breakout room? And Doug as well, correct? Uh, Yes. Okay. And I, Harry Fox, does he need to be included? Let's see. Um, there's just the 200 Ash Street, which we already talked about. Yeah, we already talked about that, so I don't think yeah, it's necessary. Yeah, come too. off. We're so he does not need to come over, correct? Right. Okay. He gets yeah. lucky. He gets, he gets to drive home. Drive home. Drive home. Good night, everyone. Good night, Harry. Good night, Harry. Thank, Thank you. Good night, Harry. Yeah, everybody's come back. Recording is back on, just so you all know. And we do still have some public that are in the meeting. All right, we got everyone back. We beamed up, Scotty. <laughs> Scotty has beamed you all back. <laughs> all right, very good. Uh, I think we're done. Uh, motion to adjourn, please. Still move. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Well done. Very good. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. Bye Thank bye. you. Have a Thank good you. time. Be safe. Good night. You're driving home. Yeah. <laughs> good night. 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 Good night.